Um, we have Tahila Alfonso. She's the only female, only person of color nominated in her category, and she's the youngest nominee in her category. Would you be interested in chatting with her? You're good? Okay, all good. Thanks so much. I just want to know how to get somebody to talk to one of my bands. I have no publicist around. Any idea? What about right here? <laughs> uh, you don't even know who it was. I know, we're not set up yet. So okay, that's good. Yeah. He passed and didn't even know who it was. If, if, right. if there's I'm nobody rolling, then we can't. I'm messing with you, bro. I'm mad, giving you a hard time, brother. It's all good. I have a hiatus coyote coming through in a little bit. Is that someone you'd love to speak with? They were nominated for Best Progressive R&B Album. Um, they've been nominated twice before for Best Progressive R&B Performance. Best Food Grass album. Is there interest? Okay. Mm -hmm. Hi guys. Mon Laferte, nominated for Best Regional Mexican Album Performer for the premiere. Okay. Yeah? All right. Coming in a minute from Extra.
I'm with Japanese Breakfast, who's up for Best New Artists, and I'm not as alternative. She'll be here probably in like 20 or 30. Very nice. Okay. No, no, no. Here with Mola Ferte and her translator. Hola, ¿qué tal? Muy bien. Yo soy Amanda. Yo hablo español. Trato. If we need to okay. do it in English, I okay. can translate, so I'm okay. going to be taking notes so okay. I can be as okay. precise as possible. If you can translate, though, for what she says, that would be very helpful for yeah, all that's, people yeah. back in the office. Absolutely. Way, whatever I do. Okay. Translate. Are you going to ask in Spanish, or...? Um, I'm going to try in Spanish, and then if not, we'll go with Perfect. English. Perfect. <laughs> let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Are you ready, Jeff? All good. Okay. If you can tell me about your morning, um, are you ready, all of that? Pues soy, acabo de ser mam mamá hace mes y medio, tengo un bebé, entonces me desperté a las 4, a las 5, a las 6 para darle desayuno a mi bebé y mientras lo tenía colgado aquí eh, me estaba como arreglando para y comiendo un poco acá y el bebé acá. <laughs> So I, uh, I just became a mother, and uh, I have a, a, a month and a half baby, a month and a half old baby, and uh, I woke up at four, then at five, then at six, feeding him, and while I was holding him for, for uh, having breakfast, I was getting ready, and here I am. Entonces, estás un poco cansada hoy. Un poquito, pero muy feliz. Pero muy feliz. I'm a little tired, but very happy. Y dime cómo te sientes sobre tu primera nominación de Grammys. Qué increíble. Es increíble, estoy muy contenta. Me encanta cómo la música en español está conectando mucho con el mundo entero. Creo que el idioma ya no es un impedimento para comunicarnos. Y eso me tiene súper, súper feliz. I feel incredible. It's, I'm very happy. Uh, I feel that music in Spanish has been connecting with, with people and uh, that makes me very, very happy. ¿Y cómo te sientes uh, sobre representar Chile hoy? Bueno, no sé si, re, no creo que represente a Chile, no me siento así, <risa> pero me siento feliz de estar haciendo música, eh, de venir de alguna manera de un país así tan chiquito y en el sur, eh, y estar haciendo música, eso me, me hace muy feliz. <risa> I don't think that I'm representing Chile, I... I... I don't think I feel that way, but I'm happy um, about making music and coming from a very small country down south and uh, being here. ¿Tienes un mensaje para tus aficionados? Un mensaje para mis fans. Que gracias por todo su apoyo. Que estoy muy feliz. Para mi, para mi yo de chiquita, que lo logramos. Estamos aquí en los Grammys. Well, uh, thanks for all the support. I'm very happy, and for my younger self, uh, I can say to myself, we did it. <laughs> oh, es de una diseñadora mexicana. Se llama Barbara Sanchez Kane. Y amo lo que haces, todo su lo que haces arte. Uh, this is a Mexican designer. Uh, her name is Barbara Sanchez Kane, and I love everything that she does. She makes art. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>
So, our group has been nominated for the best classical solo vocals, and in this group there is a Asian female voice being nominated in, in a category since uh, 1959 of the Grammy, first time ever Asian woman. There is a classical vocal solo, yeah, and, and the first ever Asian female voice. Okay, thank you. I'll tell a story, simple story about myself. Hi, I have Reverend Julius Love from the Blind Boys of Alabama, five-time Grammy winner, is nominated me this year. Uh, gospel. But they're nominated in the American Roots category. Yeah. Okay, cool. Can you go ahead and just say your name for my producers back uh, in the studio? Say it again. Just say your name for my producer. I know who you are, but for my producers back in the studio. Okay. I'm Reverend Julius Love of the Blind Boys of Alabama. Now, the Blind Boys of Alabama are a legendary gospel group, but I'm wondering, does it ever get old coming to the Grammys? No. <laughs> and why is that? Because you always in line to meet somebody that you never met before, somebody that you can encourage, somebody that enjoys talking to you or seeing you once again. And you guys are nominated again this year. You know, a lot of times people will say, you know, it's an honor to be nominated, but I'm sure it feels good to win too. Well, yeah, we won five Grammys, and I'm excited because here we go again. And you never know where this ministry will take us because we look at what we do as a ministry, you know? And it being a ministry, if I can just help somebody, if we can just help somebody, then you know what? Our living will not be in vain, even if it's through a song. Because you never know who might need words of encouragement. That. Thank you so much and good luck tonight. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank you sir. Thank you very much.
I think people will just yeah, slow this one. Yeah, this one. <laughs> from Ghana, best global album, first for his country of Ghana. Oh, okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Jeff, can we uh, do this? Yeah, this is oh, okay. Yeah, let's do it. Do you want me to hold this? That's Sorry, it's even better. Right? No, that's perfect, actually. Okay. That's perfect. Okay. Got it? <laughs> I got it. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but so first off, you know, we're here at the Grammys, it's in Las Vegas this year. Just tell me how it's been so far for you. It's been an amazing time, you know. It's, you know, because it took a lot, you know, we went through a lot in terms of the whole world. And then the Grammys were postponed. I was out in Ghana, and I feel that coming to Vegas and finally happening is also a testament that we have turned the corner in terms of all that's going on and music is going to be instrumental in leading to that healing and bringing people together so that's what my music is about you know it's about empowering people and finding the common grounds to amplify everybody you're nominated for, for best global album. best global music album and uh, i'm from ghana in west africa and it's also uh the i'm the first nominee from my country and uh, this is my second nomination too uh, at the Grammy. So I feel privileged and at the same time honored with gratitude uh, to not only represent my country but also represent the entire continent. And what are you looking forward to the most tonight? Well, you know, tonight I am just grateful to be here, first of all. And I want, you know, as I said, music is, is the food of the soul. So I'm ready to be at the podium, be with everybody, uh, watch the performances, and soak in the good vibrations that I know that I'm going to take back to my hometown and my country and also the continent and let people know that, you know what, the world is ready for the next phase right now. So that's what I'm here to dip into the well springs and fetch some of that incredible water and bring it to the rest of the world. Thank you very much. God bless us all. Yes, brother. <laughs> okay, thank you. Blessings. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful day. I have spice. I showed you support. Spice, this is Gary with AP. Hi, Gary. How are you? I'm good. I'm hot, but I'm good. You're hot and beautiful. Thank so you. you look really, really good. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so first off, tell me about this outfit. You're gorgeous. You know, I'm actually um, styled by Fiskani from the Ivy Showroom. This outfit is inspired by a lot of times people try to cover me up, but they didn't know that I'm a seed and that I'm going to grow out of the garden. So I'm in the rose garden. Wow, I love it. Now, obviously, you know, we're here in Vegas with the Grammys. How has your experience been so far? My experience is absolutely amazing. I mean, being in Vegas is just, you know, I've been having an exciting time. My entire cast from Love & Hip Hop came out with me to celebrate, so everybody's just anticipating the moment, and I'm having fun. I'm happy to be the first hardcore dancehall artist to be nominated for a Grammy. So the experience alone, I appreciate it. I'm humbled. Now, obviously, we know how big dance hall is, but I'm wondering, just from your perspective, obviously, you have, like, reggae tone, right? And, yes. and it kind of blew up in the last 10 years. I'm wondering, do you ever feel like reggae or dance hall gets kind of left behind? Or, or what's your take on it as an artist? You know, I feel like reggae and dance hall, you know, um, could have been more recognized. More recognized because oftentimes other genres takes from our culture and we do not get that rating that we deserve. But I feel absolutely, you know, great that um, we're still in the um, nominee, the nomination for the Grammys. So, you know, it's still a big thing for dance hall and Jamaica. I love it. Well, good luck to you tonight. You too. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Gary. This is Rollo with Ruder. Hi, Rollo. How are you? 
Jeff, Jeff. I'm just here to handle the dress. Man, that's my job today. Man, you just so low key, like we don't know who you are, man. Uh, no, I'm just, I'm really here in support of Spice. Um, obviously, she has the best reggae album, and I'm, you know, I'm the executive producer and co producer and co writer of it. So it's, uh, you know, I'm in a support role here, you know, I'm giving her a moment. Right. Does the Grammys ever get old? Obviously, I mean, you've been doing this for a long time and done it in a big way. Does it ever get old to you? Uh, you know, I love it when it's more organized. <laughs> it's a bit it's a bit chaotic. Um, well, then talk about it coming to Vegas from usually being in L.A. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's, it's a bit, it takes a little getting used to and moving around and so many different um, entrances and passes and all of that. So, but overall... I think the nostalgia of the Grammys, no, that doesn't get old. You know, you and lastly, I, a part of it. Sorry. And lastly, obviously, we know you're looking forward to seeing what Spice does, but just in general, what are you looking forward to tonight? I'm just loving just to just soak up the moment, you know what I mean? And uh, I'm here with a lot of my peers, a lot of the guys that are in the category we all were partying last night and having a good time. So I just want to be a part of the whole vibe and just see where it goes. You know what I mean? I'm not. You know, I'm Anita, I want to see Anita perform. So. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, you know, and last question would be, after your first Grammys like, nomination, how did that change your career, or did it? Like, that first I, I, it's nice to be acknowledged by your peers, you know, that, okay, yeah, you know, um, so yeah, it's that feeling, and it's always, anybody who said it's not great to win, or nice to win, they're lying, you know. It's nice to win, it's nice to have those little, those little mantles, those little things up on your mantles, you know, so. Um, I'm happy for it. Uh, I, I don't think it ever gets old in that sense. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Good luck. Much respect. Yeah. Hi, I have nominated Carrie Jo. She is nominated tonight for the Best Contemporary Christian Album. She has performed with Justin Bieber. Okay, thank you. Hi, guys. I have, I'm good. How are you? I'm okay, good. Great. I have four time Grammy nominated producer Kizzo. We are all the major Now I'm just going to do that. Hey guys, how you doing? We have three time Grammy award. So this is nominated for Best Radio Album this year. Uh, are you guys doing yours? All right, cool. Good job. Am I too close? Never. <laughs> uh, just for my uh, producers back home, can you say your name? I'm Graham Smorgan. I'm for Best Reggae Album. And first off, tell me about the outfit, man. Very dapper. Oh, thank you. You're quite dapper yourself. Um, well, it's just, you know, the good old uh, India Ari's mom made this jacket for me uh, many years. That, that relationship was established many years ago. And uh, we toured together. We did some tours with John Legend, and I always wanted to make an outfit for me. And during the, the pandemic, I made an album called Positive Vibration. It's up for Best Reggae Album. And she said, let me make something for you, Graham. So Simpson, here I am. 
This is made by Simpson, yes, Havens, and um, it's just a joy living in Nashville and soaking that hole up and bringing the sunshine to the city of Nashville because Nashville is not a place where we're inviting the world. Nashville is a music city where we believe in real instruments, real music, drum, bass. So it's a special thing to bring together country and reggae music on this album. It blends so well. Uh, you know, a lot of times people say it's just an honor to be nominated, but I, I can only speak for myself. If it was me, I, part of me wants to win. So just talk about, you know, being nominated. Uh, the, the great thing, I've been nominated several times before and won three times. So it's always a special energy because what makes it different is each project. Each project makes it brand new. So we all would love to win, but it's a win in itself to be recognized out of so many albums that people put out every year. So I'm thankful, man. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, sir. Yes, man. Go strong. It's going to be a long day. <laughs> oh, yeah. We need money. Yes. I told him to say this. I think it was a couple of acts. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess there's a few acts on the bank. How is it to be like to be back to the Adam Brown, she co-wrote all of uh, Don Batiste's album. It is not named for four words. Don Batiste's album of the year record of the year. Okay, sure. Releasing an album and then not being able to perform it was... Alright, I think we have one. We have one. It's two seconds. Okay. Purple is my favorite color, so... You got cool points already. <laughs> I know who you are, but just for my producers back home, can you see? My name is Autumn Rowe. Great. Okay, so obviously, first off, tell us about this gorgeous outfit. You look so pretty. Thank you. I'm wearing Marquesa and K Jewels and Vera shoes. Um, this dress is purple, which is inspired by royalty. Um, John told me I was a queen, so I wanted to take that all in and feel like one tonight. And um, yeah, I just really wanted a big princess moment for today. I mean, you guys have a big, big night ahead of you. What's the ante anticipation been like? Wow. So this anticipation for tonight is actually like over 20 years of like working in music. Um, when we created We Are, in the, we created in his dressing room at Seiko Bear. And um, I said in the dressing room, I said, we're going to get a Grammy nomination. I was pretty confident in that somehow. Um, I did not expect eight. Also, like there's such a difference between believing something's going to happen and it actually happening and it's there's just no way to prepare for this feeling um also like when we created the album soul hadn't come out yet john didn't get his oscar yet you know he's just in such a different place in his life and for the world to be celebrating him and see the talents that he has is just a very fulfilling thing for me as a co-creator and obviously he's the most nominated artist like what's his kind of stance been on this whole kind of phenomenon these past few months you know, John is John. So John, like, John is just always very in the moment of what he does. And that's one of the things I really love about him. So, like, if we're writing, he only thinks about what you're doing at the moment. He's not, he doesn't think ahead. He does not think into the past too much. It's just, like, he's very present. Um, but at the same time, it has been, like, quite surreal when we, when we talked. The last time we saw each other was the first time since getting nominated. And it was just, like, wow. You know, like, what happened here? It's just crazy. Wow, awesome. Well, good luck tonight. I'm sure you'll be taking care. Thank you so much. I think it was speaking to me. Of course. Thank you.
We talked before via email or something. I, I recognize you. Yeah. Uh, good to see you. Thank you. Hello again. Uh -huh. Your fun fans. I'm going to pitch you Jerry Moon. She is nominated for you no, I didn't do that right. Best Children's Music Album. Um, and it's funny as well because it's the first album that I've been approved to be nominated for the best of And it's her first grand nomination. Okay. Sure. Uh, Jeff, let me ask her a couple of questions. No. I love your outfit. No, you have the outfit at the night, so. All right, so I know who you are because we just introduced ourselves, but for my producers back home, can you say yes. your name? My name is Cherry Moon, and I'm part of the One Tribe Collective, and this is... Aaron Nigel Smith, co-producer on the album. Amelia Robinson, another co-producer. Wow. So first off, I have to ask you, your outfit is incredible. Can you talk about what went behind choosing it? <laughs> um, I mean, I just wanted to have fun and just bring something that was going to be, I guess, striking for not only adults, but because we're nominated for the best children's album, something that kids could think that was fun as well. Um, and I come bearing a positive message of sharing love. Oh, yeah. love so first off, what went into creating this awesome project? Well, in the year of George Floyd and the pandemic and Breonna Taylor, we took it upon ourselves to come together as a community, 26 black and brown artists, to create a monumental album that uplifts and celebrates black and brown voices. So it's been an incredible process. We spent, we're in the trenches on Zoom recording for a couple of years, and, and here we are now, you know, and I feel, feel like we're doing a good job of representing, creating more representation in the family music space. Yeah, you guys are bringing this to the Grammy, so I guess I'll ask you, you know, what has this experience been like? Oh, it's been incredible. This is the first time that a lot of, most of these artists, 26 artists, have come together in the same space. So seeing each other for the first time and already having this strong sisterhood, brotherhood, has been the most incredible experience. Yeah, this is the first time a black, you know, black people have been nominated in for this? this category, exactly. So about the significance of that? Well, I mean, it's, it's all about... Uh, the unity and the representation and for the children and, and that are watching this category for you know them feeling inclusive um, and knowing that the, there's music and artists that look like them out there doing this you know so it's really really important um, and our messages are just you know just all about being one and it's just it's amazing it's amazing yeah. to be here we're and again yeah. we're celebrating and this is actually the first we did, like he said we all did this over zoom during the pandemic and this is the first time we're actually meeting in person so this is incredible it's an historical moment across the board but not the first time you guys are meeting uh -huh. yes first yeah. nominations yeah. all of us yeah. in person yeah. yeah so what's that been like being <laughs> i mean just i mean you, you know some people are like taller than you think some people are shorter like it's kind of crazy <laughs> So was she taller or shorter than you? She's <laughs> <laughs> always tall. Yeah. Uh, so I'm glad you guys got to meet each other. Yes. And what, a, what an occasion to meet at, exactly, right? I right. mean, <laughs> hello. Awesome. Well, good luck tonight. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. By the way, I didn't... The only thing is, but please, 
Mr. Sean Paul, oh, yeah. I can't even tell you what I was doing in college listening to your music, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. It's been, man, it's, I had a lot of great memories. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. <laughs> of course, of course, man. So, uh, first off, tell me about this awesome outfit, man. Yeah, the awesome outfit. The pants is Philip, uh, Philip Flying, and the jacket is a one of a kind. Sometimes I like to do that, you know what I mean? There's no real label on it or nothing. We just did it up, you know what I mean? I like it, I like it. <laughs> now, you know, stranger to the Grammys, man, this, you've been doing this for a long time. You know, does it ever get old? You know, music is what I love. I love the stage and I love being in the studio. And most other things I don't really love, but this event I really do because you get to see and meet a lot of people and, and connect on politics. And right now, today, I'm celebrating this unity in the dance hall and reggae community. So um, I'm definitely out here looking to, to go say what's up to Spice right on the road. I just seen Shaggy and Gramps Morgan. Uh, we've been we've been seeing each other all weekend. Friday night I went to their party. They came to my party on Saturday night. It's been a good thing. You know what I mean? And how's it been in Vegas? Because you know it's usually in LA. What's the experience been like here? Oh yeah, I kept thinking it was LA. So I'm telling my 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 brethren's like yo. Come true to the party, and they're like, four hour drive, bro. I, I keep saying, oh, damn, I'm I thinking that is in LA, you know what I mean? I'm so used to being in LA, so yeah, it's a little different for me. All my, all my connects, I was like, yeah, we coming, and then I was like, oh, sorry, we're, we're gonna be in, in Vegas. It's just as good, though. Uh, Vegas is a very entertaining city and, and awesome to be here, man. I, I got friends here as well, so we did enjoy. 
Awesome, man. Well, lastly, man, like I said, I've been listening to you for a long time. Had a lot of fun in your music, and you're nominated again this year. What's been the key to your longevity and success? Uh, you know, just loving music, you know, and also giving thanks for the fans who have been supporting me. People, people, people love it, and I, I, I feel blessed by that, man. Can't say anything other than that. Uh, big up to the people who influenced me too. All the reggae greats, you know, we've lost a, quite a few in in uh, these last two years. So today is special for me also to kind of just salute them. You know what I mean? Thank you so much for your time. Who would have thought I would have been interviewing Sean Paul? <laughs> you would have told me that in college. I would have Salute. believed you, man. Salute. Take care, all right? Thank you. Can I bring back coffee over to you? Sure. Yeah. Hey there. I have my kind here nominated best album notes for a year of Greg Strong from a publisher. It's a really great piece here in the category. It's on the same records. Would you want to talk about it? What's up, man? How are you? All right, all right. Just two seconds. Not so good. Okie dokie. All right, man. First off, you know, fresh to death. You know, tell me about uh, how you chose the outfit. Um, this is a custom made um, Amiri suit. Uh, Matt, this is um, a tribute to uh, our late friend um, Virgil Abloh. So I spoke to the designer to kind of like allow me to mix both brands, you know, his, his brand and Virtual's brand and I'm wearing Virtual speakers and, you know, just to pay tribute to, you know, to our guy. Wow, I love that. Now, obviously you're nominated tonight. You know, to a lot of times people say it's just an honor to be nominated. I know if it, well, I was me, it would be an honor, but I also want to win <laughs> too. Yeah. Can you just talk about that process of, of just being nominated? Um, I think we all know win, yes, but... I think if it's your first time, um, it's, it's just overwhelming to be nominated, you know, and you take that as a win. You know, I speak for myself. At first, you want to win. That's why we work to get here. So that's, that's what happened with me. I'm like, in my lifetime, I want to have a Grammy. And then I get nominated. I'm here. I'm like, oh, maybe I, not so much. Because they know I exist. They have nominated me. Maybe that's enough, you know. So it's such a... Uh, uh, catch 22 thing, you know, but I'm, either way, I'm excited to be here. I'd, I'd love to win a Grammy, you know, I'd, I'd, I've worked my life to get here, so, you know, we, we're crossing fingers. Well, last question would be when did you know you had something special with the album? Like, there had to be some point in the album making process where, like, man, I may, I may have something here. Um, I think one of the singles, like, hit like over 200 million streams that's a big number to me you know in, in my space in the world where i live musically we don't do those numbers you know and just a thing like with delegator and delilah and when when we hit that i was like okay you know this this is serious you know and i knew that song was supposed to do that so and intentional about where others should sit not all of them must do those numbers you know there's like diehard fans who don't want music that do those numbers and we have their song yeah. too you know yeah. so we create that kind of balance on the album yeah. 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 thank you man thank you for the time appreciate it hi there uh, my name is jackie i've got best new Argus nom uh, sorry best new uh, alternative album nominee uh fleet boxes do you want to have a chat with him i think we're good thank okay, you cool. thank, thank you, you so much, much.
So I actually talked to you last year with dinner party on Zoom with you and Terrence. Oh, so yeah, yeah, Sarah, yeah, And yeah. I just actually interviewed Robert in studio last week. So oh, nice, we talked about nice, you. nice. Okay. So first off, man, I love the outfit. Tell oh, me how you chose it. Uh, my niece, Corinne Washington, actually designed this one. Oh, wow. So you just knew you got it. You got it. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we kind of work on it together. And, you know, she's a, she's a budding young designer. So I was like, hey, why don't you make me something? She made the jacket that I wore on the uh, Fallon show recently, too. So I'm a huge fan. Can you talk about, you know, first thought? Well, let's ask you about the nomination. So you got Dinner Party is nominated tonight. How cool is it that it was created during the pandemic, spoke to social issues, and now it's nominated? It was really cool. You know, it was, it was such a project of love. You know, it was like one of those things where, uh, you know, I've been friends with Terrace and, and Rob for years, and, and we've always worked together, but we hadn't had a chance to really work together at this level, you know, where we really make it a record together. And, uh, you know, to kind of have that pan out to, to, to be such a, to make so much noise in a good way, you know, it's been really great. And then, you know, obviously I kind of talked to Robert about this. You guys were making jazz cool and essentially, just to be blunt, reclaiming it for black people. So can you talk about why that's important and, and why you guys decided to kind of push that forward? Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's the foundation of our, of our heritage in a lot of ways. It's a big piece of our foundation of our heritage. And it's, you know, it, it to me, you know, jazz music kind of represented the intellectual emancipation of our people, you know, in a, in a, in a large way, in, in a way that, that disproved a lot of the ideas about us not being able to think and things like that, because it made the most complicated, difficult music that existed in the world at that point. And so um, we can never forget that. We can, and we should cherish that. And um, you know, for us, it was like, you know, jazz has always been there for us, and it's always been a part of us. And, and even though we made other styles of music and we love other styles of music, we never forgot what jazz was to us. And you know, that's all we really did was just play the music in the way that we heard it. You know, and it, and, it, and it turned out that that was 
that spoke to people. And you guys have mixed it with hip hop, you know, with obviously Kendrick with To Pimp a Butterfly. And so can you talk about how you guys have stayed true to jazz, but then brought it to some of the biggest hip hop artists in the world? Oh yeah, well it was always there too, you know, like people like Dr. Dre was always using jazz and like, 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 uh, you know, DJ Battlecat who performs with me sometimes, he's a big jazz head. And you know, and so, you know, and then it, obviously like the Q-Tips and, and the Jay Dillers of the world have always been tapped into jazz. And so what, what it was is that we, you know, I think our approach to the music made them want to kind of put it more into the front. You know, it was always kind of like a like a a, a force that was kind of pushing that hip hop, R and B, rock and roll has always been in there. And if you talk to any of those artists, they're all like, hey, and and kind of even like before we got our own solo projects out, we were always kind of mixing what we had into that music. And at a certain point, they realized like, oh, let's pull it to the front a little bit. And that's kind of like what it is. Yeah. There you go, man. Good luck tonight. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. I saw you at uh, Afro Park. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was dope. Man. You were up there. I was way back there because so many people. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a great show, man. Oh, yeah. Cool. Thank cool. you. Hope to run into you good soon. Oh, yeah. Hello, man. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, guys. We have Falu here. She's nominated for a children's album. This is her second nomination. Okay, Would you sure. like to? Hi. Hi. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Of course. I, yeah. I read it, but I read it, you know, I grow a lot. Oh, really? I do. Okay. Women read it. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. All right. So I am Gary Hamilton here at the Grammys, and I am with... Falu. Now, first off, how has your experience at the Grammys been so far? Because it's different. It's in, it's in Vegas. It is in Vegas, and it's beautiful. Like, it's, it's, I think it's a smaller uh, place, so I can mingle, and it's just so cool, and I, I love the weather. And gambling, of course. So I like it all. And the best part is I get to meet all my great, great friends. And I just performed. I just performed at the opening ceremony with John Popper, who I started my journey with, along with Yo Yo Ma, Philip Glass, Ricky Martin. And I have had this fortune of collaboration. And today at the Grammys, I was able to bring the South Asian voice to this palette of American music. And now, it's like the spice, the spice is coming on to the food and I'm just so happy because I remember when I first got invited to sing at the White House with Obamas, they, they like the South Asian vibe. So I think now it's getting a little bit of good mileage. And you're nominated for Best Children's Album. Right? Yes. So can you talk about just, you know, being a woman who's South Asian nominated in that category when we really haven't seen a lot of really diversity in there? Yes, this is the second nomination for me in the children's and Last year, I know, you know, there were there was a lot of different things, but this year we celebrate diversity, we celebrate acceptance, tolerance, we celebrate that people are more able to see each other because of their character and less because of their skin. So I think I'm in a very wonderful space right now. And that's a lesson that if anybody should learn, it should be children. I think so too. If we if we teach them now, I think we will see a more colorful and an accepting world. I agree with you. Thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. Thank you. And good luck tonight.
to push yourself and write music that... I just wanted to tap in with you on Mass and Not. Guys, I brought snacks. Jeff, snacks. White bag, water, water. Um, did I get candy? I don't know if I got candy. Pringles and like Nutri-Grain bars. So just go in there. Hey Jeff, shoot her. Can you shoot her? I think that's yeah, Doja Cat right there. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. This way. This is Oriana from Mexico, uh, Colombia, but she lives in Mexico. So we try to put all the modern nature in our outfits because it's about the album. You know, it's the four elements. So we connect with that. So we put all the art inside of this. ¿En español también para la gente en Colombia? Sí. Bueno, eh, este es como nuestro outfit que está relacionado con la madre naturaleza. Estas máscaras son hechas por Oriana y todo este outfit también. Y bueno, nada, tenemos diferentes cosas que, que, que vienen de la tierra, como nosotros las vemos en nuestro punto de vista, los cuatro elementos. Ya, ya, we are disconnected, so now we have to connect with ourselves, with nature, with the basic things, because uh, this is the way we can be happy. You know, so many distractions, so we have to come back to the real things. So this is what we're talking about in our album. ¿Tiene un mensaje para la gente en Colombia? Sí, claro, que, que nada, que nos conectemos con todo eso bonito que tenemos, con toda esa naturaleza y con las cosas importantes, la familia, eh, los árboles, los ríos, los mares y nosotros mismos. 
And is there anything else that anybody would like to add tonight? Uh, what? No, sorry? I was just asked if there was anything you'd like to add. No, I think we're About the nominated meeting here in Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's an honor to be here representing music from Latin America, from Colombia, alternative music from Colombia. It's a huge movement all over Latin America and music in Spanish that is getting every day bigger and, and more beautiful. And we're really happy to be here. We're really happy. And it's, sorry, it's important to, we have a message. We have a, a message with all these, these lyrics, with all these albums. And it's important, I think, a yeah, Latin American artist right now doing that because it's so, so big. So. People need to hear that. Yes, thank you so much for saying that. And just for our producers back in the studio, can you just say your names on camera again? Yeah. Bomba Stereo. Jose from Bomba Stereo. And Simon from Bomba Stereo. It's so nice to meet you guys. We're so having so much fun. And she said the band name. Okay. Oh, Lee, yes. Uh -huh. Thank you, thank so you very much. much. You look thank lovely. You. Thank you. I love your message. Can you quickly go
So are you just bragging to us then? No, no, no. Japanese breakfast coming up now. Oh, it's hot. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? So hot. <laughs> yeah. I feel like the sun like just started. Uh, it's full red. It's it's intense out here, but I was looking at the back of your dress. And yeah, I, like, it's very airy. It yeah, out. yeah. I'm yeah. glad I went short. It's very short. <laughs> well, I'll start with your dress. Speaking of, uh, and I would like to welcome you. Who are you wearing? And why did you know this was the, uh, the outfit you wanted? Um, I'm wearing Valentino Couture. Uh, our album is called Jubilee, and the cover is yellow, and it's just such a happy color. So I knew as soon as I saw this dress that it was kind of like chic, but also a little weird, uh, and and it just called to me. I'm wearing a Paul Smith, and I wanted to keep with the brightness too. Um, it's just a super exciting night for us, so I wanted to show that, you know, visually with what I'm wearing. Yeah, and, and how you know. What's your review of having the show in Vegas? What is it like so far? I know it's hot out here. Vegas is wild. Um, yeah, it's been, uh, I haven't been to Vegas in a, in a long time. The last time we toured through here, we were like super COVID conscious, so we like didn't get to really hang out at all. Um, so yeah, I. Yeah, it's great, it's great being back here. <laughs> it's like any excuse to come to Vegas for a weekend, especially one as good as going to the Grammys, I'll take it. It's actually funny because the first concert I ever played in Vegas was like at a crepe restaurant where they kept telling us to turn down our amps. <laughs> and so it feels like very full circle to like come from a crepe restaurant to like uh, the Grammys red carpet. So yeah, it feels special that it's in Vegas, I guess. I love those roots. <laughs> yeah, yeah real. <laughs> and your first time nominees tonight, I mean, Win or lose, tell me about what this means for you personally in your careers. I mean, it's the highest honor, you know, now, like, uh, everyone's parents believes us when we say we <laughs> what our jobs are, yeah. you know, so, like, there's, no one can ever take that away from us. Yeah, and, and you? Yeah, it's you? so validating to get here. It's something that, you know, when you start playing music, especially uh, more alternative artists like us, uh, it's just, like, a huge treat to be nominated for this. Well, have so much fun tonight. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I love your look. Thank you. <laughs> oh, sorry. No.
Um, our roots are in Colombia, but we have invited guests from our album representing Mexico, Venezuela, um, Argentina, Brazil, Panama. So it's a, it's a pan Latin American. Well, for our producers back in the, sure. in the studio, can I get your names for a second? Yeah. I'm Andres Salguero. Cristina San Sanabria. Mucho okay. gusto, and you're representing Colombia? We're, yes, our band is called Uno, Dos, Tres, Andres. Yeah. And this is the first time a Latin American artist has been nominated for, is it? It's the first time a uh, South American artist has been nominated for Best Children's Album in these Grammys. So we're celebrating that. Uh, we want to take it down to South America to celebrate with our friends. Uh, and really, it's a celebration of, of, of many, many sources. So you guys are trailblazers. How does that feel representing Colombia in this category? Uh, it feels so, so powerful. When I was growing up in the U.S. Um, with Colombian parents, um, I didn't have an album like this that was in Spanish and English. So we love the increasing um, highlighting of, of children's music that sounds like a lot of different things so that all children have something that resonates with them and their families. Yeah. And the ceremony in Vegas, we're obviously in Vegas, a little warm out here. Tell me about the experience in Vegas. Well, we've been here several times because of the Latin Grammys, but we've been also here performing for the communities. We're performing at, at the beautiful libraries they have here. That is something most people don't get to see when they come to Vegas, but they have an amazing library system. And, and we actually yesterday performed in Henderson for the community. They had a, a, lot, a Grammy showcase with, with the other nominees, and it was a love fest. It was beautiful. So we've seen all sides of Vegas. ¿Tienen un mensaje para los aficionados en Colombia? Claro que sí, para todas las familias colombianas les queremos muchísimo, tenemos muchas ganas de regresar muy pronto y ojalá con un, gar con un galardón para traérselo a ustedes. ¿Y puedes decir cómo te sientes representar Colombia claro. aquí en los Grammys? Claro, wow. Para nosotros representar a Colombia y a todo lo que a todo lo que nos ha dado la música colombiana es un honor increíble. Gracias Felipe Peláez, gracias Gerao, gracias a, a la gente de Gaira y a toda la gente que nos ayudó a estar acá. Thank you so much. Muchísimas gracias. 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 Sí. Muchas awesome. gracias. Did you get one of the? Oh, oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're thank so you. Right. Love your look. Thank you. <laughs>
Um, I might check on the tent stuff. Okay. Because I think I need to change out of the car, the limo fee. Sounds good. I'm sorry, we're kind of shut down. Right? Okay, thank you.
The rest is the pre show announcement. Alright, I'm just going to keep my phone charging until other commercials.
Show like oh, in that album five years ago. Yeah, twenty seconds. Yeah, he, uh, that was the best show I've seen to him. I, I, I I never seen him live. I was so blown away. Who's that? Robert Clapp. Robert Clapp is here. No, 
And I am with Corey Henry. Now, man, you're having a, a big night. But first off, what's it like just being at the Grammys in Vegas? It's incredible. I'm having a, an amazing time. Um, I've been looking forward to this time for my entire life. I'll be honest. Uh, I've always wanted to be a part of the Grammys, a part of um, making music and being acknowledged by my peers and some of my friends. And um, all that's happening in such an amazing way. And I'm having one of the greatest times of my life, I promise you. And you're nominated for Best Progressive on the Yes, so yes, sir. So when did you know you had something special? <laughs> oh, man, it was so many things that happened with this album. Um, I felt I felt like halfway through recording it, um, the songs were shaping up in such of a specific way. During the pandemic, I wrote um, um, a large majority of the album. And um, I always wanted to make music like my heroes, Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder, music that reflected the times, um, and I had a, time, a chance to do that with this particular project. And once that was happening, Slide the Family Stone as well. Once that was happening, I felt like I was really doing something, something special. Wow. And on top of that, I mean, Donda, obviously one of the biggest albums of the year. Talk about your influence on that. Woo. I mean, what was, what was it like? Because there was so much going into it. What was it like working on the project? It was, it was an incredible experience for me. Um, one of the First, I want to say first, but one of the major projects projects that I've been a part of, where I was able to do my thing, you know, like play the organ. I didn't have to like change, you know, who I was to fit, a, you know, a, a certain narrative. I was just able to make music, uh, the type of music that Kanye is, is making, you know, his um, his uh, passion towards um, the creativity for his mama and uh, uh, what that means to him. It was just a special, you know, time being a part of that thing. I, I also lost my mother as well, so 
I, you know, I understand like where he's coming from, and you know, it's just beautiful to be able to make music out of you know, you know, crazy situations and you know stuff like that. So I'm really honored and blessed to be a part of it. Lastly, you know, a lot of us are looking forward to seeing him perform, but now he's not going to perform. Yeah. Do you think the band should have let him perform? Yes. Yeah. They should let him perform. You know, I, I wish he was able to perform. I think it would have been crazy to see Kanye perform today. I mean, yes. <laughs> they just would have been shut down. It would have been, Con this would have been Kanye's time. Not, I mean, it's always Kanye's time. It's always Kanye's time. <laughs> it's always Kanye's time. It's always Kanye's time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, as, as only he does, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Congratulations on everything. I can't wait to see what happens tonight, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, of course. Hi. So I talked to you during the pandemic for your special. We did a Zoom. Oh, we did. so nice. Oh, that's sweet. I love it. Come in here, honey. So first off, um, you look gorgeous. Can you tell me about the dress and how you chose it? The dress, this is the first time I know the dress that I'm wearing on the red carpet, so let's celebrate that moment. It's Marquesa. Um, what are you wearing, honey? Prada? Prada. Oh, he well. loves Prada. Yeah. He loves his Prada. <laughs> oh, thank you. These are mine. I own this brand. Let's go. It's just Joe Coy's brand. There you go. There you go. So you guys are here at the Grammys. Obviously, it's in Vegas this year. How's the experience been so far? Uh, well, it's pretty exciting because Joe has a house in Vegas. So we are celebrating his birthday this week after the Grammys tonight. We're having our little after party for all of our friends who flew in for this. So we have uh, about three days of celebrating coming up. So this is just the beginning. Is there anything specific you're looking forward to tonight? Um, well, my category, best uh, comedy album. I'm pretty excited. I've Let's never been go. nominated for a Grammy, so I can't even believe it. They called me and woke me up one morning. My right. agent texted me, and she said, you've been nominated for a Grammy. I said, for what? And then I looked at him. We were in Hawaii, yeah. and I was... And he said, oh my gosh, and she's like, for your comedy special album, Evolution. And I just thought, wow, well, that's so cool. So it is an honor to be nominated, you know? I think it was my interview with you that put it over the top for Evolution. That's exactly I think what I wanted to come over and say thank you for. <laughs> <laughs> well, lastly, you know, in light of just what happened at the Oscars, and you see Kanye at the Grammys, do you anticipate maybe more security in the front of the stage? Uh, I, sh I sure hope so, you know? I think uh, people going up and uh, doing their thing on stage should be make we should make sure that they're protected and taken care of and looked after right uh so nobody really wants to see anything like that happen again awesome well thank you guys for stopping and i'm serious you were so sweet when i talked to you oh, so, thanks, thank you guys oh. and i'm getting some of those thank you all right yeah, good i'll send them to you yeah, yeah, all
That's a good question. Jeff, 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 Jeff. Just two seconds. We're seeing if they're coming back this way. It looks like they may not, but I just want to be sure. Yeah, I wasn't going to go. Okay. These people that passed us up, Robert Glasper, dude in the white. Oh, you did? At the Oscars? Okay, I'll bring them to you guys first. Okay. Navier with uh, nominated for the rap album of the year. Are you guys interested in the interview? Navier?
down to the to the very end I think he's bouncing around but the lady just said she's gonna bring him to us saying that I talked to you guys during the pandemic for a dinner party and then yeah. look where we are so you know what's this moment like it's, it's it's beautiful you know what I'm saying it's it's a group of friends and we all nominated Rob's nominated again with Leon Bridges you know we are performing with Nas so it's like it's very black absolutely <laughs> extremely <laughs> and, well, speaking of very black I mean you guys you know created dinner party in the pandemic when I talked to you guys you were talking about the importance of a message and obviously I just talked to you about that with your album yeah. you know why is it important or was it important during that time to really speak on what was going on I mean if 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 you're an artist if you know uh, if you're a black artist you you do have a responsibility to be a, a human tape recorder and report the news to everybody that can't hear it so we could get allies and make it through challenges, you know what I'm saying? So we we just doing we're just responding to what's going on. As the great Derek Hodge say, I'm just responding to what's going on. You know, so yeah. me and Rob was like, you know, when we came with the idea of dinner party, we just wanted a group that we could just quickly respond and uh, have a DJ way instead of a band. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and obviously, you know, I talked to you about this, but jazz music, right? And kind of y'all kind of putting your foot down and saying, we're reclaiming this for real, for real. Yeah. And even though I just kind of talked to you about this, yeah. can you talk about it again? Why it's so important to kind of let everybody know you're reclaiming it? Well, it's uh, because if we don't do it, the history gets erased. We have to make our own history. So many people are so engulfed by history, but they forget to keep making it. And you, so it's just important for us to be us. And be true to who we are because that's what our that's what our, our, our jazz legends were doing. They were just being themselves, you know what I mean, and, and being in the time that they were in. So we the, the true tradition of jazz is to be in the time that you're in. 
and to be influenced by what is yeah. in your time period because we're supposed to sound like jazz in 2022. We're not supposed to sound like jazz in, in 1963. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yep, yep, for sure. It's all black music. We're, we like to go room to room in the big house of black music. Well, lastly, because we're in Vegas, you know, what's something that you've done in Vegas that may have to stay in Vegas this weekend? Me and my wife did some crazy shit last night, man. <laughs> I had her, I had her, I had her, I had her hanging upside down. I was, you I, had to, you, I'm me a, too. I'm yeah, a, I'm, 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 I'm a, my back hurt a little bit. But, but I failed. I, I failed we had, though. We had all the so that, that's my back is hurting right now. <laughs> Let's go with it. It's always good to see you, brother. Yeah, sure. <laughs> good to see you, Kenzie. Okay, next time. Hey, okay. Thank you. Jonathan. Hey, Jonathan. Gary, I'm sorry. Dana from Biz 3. Finally, nice to meet you. Dana from Biz 3. I know. I was like, oh my God, all the time. So nice Gary in New York. Yes, okay. I wasn't expecting you out here, so nice to meet you too. Thank you, talk to these guys. They just won Best Arrangement in Instrumental and Acapella. It's the third time in history that video game music has been nominated at the Grammys, and they just won the category. Um, okay, if you, okay, if you have a second, do you, can I bring them over? They're really cool. They're viral sensations. Video game music, it's super niche and nerdy. It's really fun. I can ask you a question. I'll ask you a question. Yeah, I'm going to bring them by. Do you want to grab this in the meantime? Sure. Thank you so much, Gary. Is there anything else? They're nominated for Best Rock Performance, Best Metal Performance, um, and they are the biggest grand Jeff, let me get these. What's up, guys? Hey there. Hey there. Take a step. Yeah, yeah. No, maybe not. Yeah, he hit me. Okay. All right, I'm Gary Hamilton with the Associated Press, and I am with Chino, Frank, Ahmed. Yeah, you guys have a big night tonight, but I want to know when you guys were making this album. Like, when did you know you had something special? It's not, it works. Like, we never go in with the preconceived idea of what we're trying to make. We just kind of go in and everybody starts just playing together. It's really an organic live situation. Um, so, you know, we all, we all, I guess, have same standards, and we can look at each other's eyes and know when we're, when we're on to something. So from song one, I mean, once we feel like we got one on our belt, then we, you know, start just building it up like building blocks. And um, it felt, I mean, I, would, I could say, you know, halfway through, we, we felt like, you know, we, we were getting close and then continued on just, just you know, writing and, and uh, having fun together. Well, did the pandemic change how you guys made music in any way? A little bit, yeah, because, I mean, we, 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 uh, we the, 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 the last part of the record, say the last third of the record, uh, we were still finishing it, so everything was kind of shut down, and we kind of had to start doing things, some things remotely, um, but we, we made it work, man. we made it work. Um, you know, everybody, uh, these two dudes still showed up, you know what I mean, we, we, we got together and just like, you know, camaraderie, camaraderie kind of locked ourselves away in you know, a little studio and then uh, finished it up, and it, yeah, it worked out. Is there anything that you guys are looking forward to in particular tonight? Just the hang, man, you know. It's been, uh, we were here 20 plus years ago, first time for the Grammys, and back to, you know, to be back again is a uh, really, really special, special thing. So looking forward, take it as it comes, man. Take it as it comes. Uh, and lastly, obviously the rock world suffered a big loss, you know, with Taylor Hawkins. You know, can you just talk about his impact on that genre? Yeah, huge, man. I mean, his spirit, this is such a good guy. I mean, what everybody says, everybody always says, you know, he was such a good, the dude was like one of the most exciting, when he got around, his energy was just very, 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 you know, powerful. We, we were lucky enough to play countless festivals and stuff with him and um, and befriend him. And, and um, it's, it's just, yeah, it's really, really sad. He will be missed for sure. Do you guys have like a favorite memory? Man. Uh, uh, we were playing, I think it was Live 105, we were in San Fran, we were playing some radio fest, and uh, we'd known each other for a few years, but he came up and he's like, he's like, man, he's looking at my drums and everything, I was like, 
like, man, you, she was so tight and so nice. And it was like, mine's like a junkyard. I was like, it's all rusted. I was like, man, it's all, it's all good, man. I'll take a little, little elbow piece in that, man. It's all good. Anyway, no, he's just a, a beaming uh, ray of light, man. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, still uh, taken aback by that, man. I just blown away. You know, um, he's loved. Well, guys, good luck tonight. Thank, Thank you, so you guys. Thank you. Yes. All right. Thank you. Huh? <laughs> I said I know who you are, but I just want you to say your name for the producers back. Okay, Young Blue. Yeah. yeah. So you know, obviously, you've had a year. You're having you're having a moment. You're here at the Grammys, man. What's it like? Uh, it's been good, man. I just you know you gotta turn you gotta turn moments to you know history, man. So you know, we just we just here making the rounds and just showing our face. I feel like that's what I've been behind the scenes a lot of, of my career. And I just feel like this year I just wanted to come out and show my face. I've been behind the scenes of a lot of huge things like throughout my career. So this year I just decided to come out. I've always been kind of shit. I love it. I love it. And I'm just curious, man, has the pandemic changed how you make music? Uh, no, nah, not at all. Because I, I got a studio at my house. So I always recorded at my home. So yeah, it's been easy for me. Yeah. Well, lastly, what's, what's, what's one thing you're looking forward to the most tonight? Um, of course I want to bring home a nomination, but, uh, a win. Know, yeah, I want to bring home a win, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just seeing the show, and just, you know, I want to see the show, I want to enjoy the show, you know, everybody, so. Always a pleasure, my brother. I do. Appreciate you. Introduce myself. All right. Thank you. All right. So I'm Gary Hamilton here in Las Vegas at the Grammys, and I'm with no. Sam Ashworth and Ruby Amonfu. Of course, we know who you are. Now you are having such a moment. What's it like being here today? You know, this being our, our second time back as nominees, third time back for life. I performed in 2013 with Jack White, but last last time in 2020 we got nominated together for Song of the Year, and then we woke up in our robes last November to find out that we were nominated again separately. So I'm telling you, you, you can't beat it. Can't beat it. Yeah. I mean, what's it like when you're creating something? There has to be a moment where you're like, I think I got something here. I don't know how everybody else will respond, but I think I have something. Mm. What was that moment? Yeah, well, I tell you, with this year being Song of the Year with Alicia Keys and Brandi Carlile, you know, it was it was like a real group effort, you know, all these women together. We we knew we had a mission, and, you know, to kind of uh, in, increase the awareness of, of the female voice. So we felt we had something because we've always believed in that. It was just time to put that in the public. Sam yeah. has a bit of a different story. Yeah, this song, Speak Now, from the movie One Night in Miami. Miami, you know, for me, like, the first and most important victory was just getting the song in the film, and so it's like, once that happened, I was happy as could be, and then we, since then, we got Oscar nomination and Golden Globe nomination, and, you know, we won the Critics' Choice Award, and now the Grammy nomination, so it's just the life of, that one song can live is just absolutely mind-blowing mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. 
thank you guys so much. Thank and good luck tonight. Thank you. All right, man. All right. Okay, hope to see you guys soon. Yeah, yeah. Know, for sure. Thank you. Well, it's pretty surreal, and uh, I mean, being at the Grammys is pretty surreal, you know what I mean? Um, and Vegas is surreal, completely unique uh, and over the top, so it's a, it's an incredible uh, mix, I think. It's, it's good. And, I mean, it's a big night for you, you know, what are you expecting tonight, or what would you like to see happen tonight? Well, you know, uh, like I said, it's a big thing for me to only to be here already. It's, it's really, really amazing to be nominated, and I think... Um, it would be uh, foolish of me to say that I expect to get a Grammy. <laughs> it's not this, but uh, it's not impossible. We'll see. You know, I try to stay relaxed, and uh, uh, if I, if we don't get the Grammy uh, somehow, I'll be more relaxed because I don't have to make uh, to, to speak in front of people. I always have this question: When you're little, do you ever stand in front of the mirror and practice a Grammy speech for the future? Did you ever do that? I, I've never done that, and I would say that would be a terrible idea because uh, it just doesn't work. To, watching at your reflection and making uh, a speech would not work for me, for sure. It would block me instantly. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. And obviously, you guys have a very popular song, raised a lot of money, so can you talk about that? So you know about uh, Amazonia? Uh, that was a big thing for us. We, we wrote that song, the one that got nominated for uh, Best Metal Performance, we wrote that song to um, express our sadness and anger and frustration when it comes to the Amazonian problem and the fact that the, the forest is shrinking. Um, every day there's 80,000 acres of forest disappearing, there's hundreds of uh, um, animal and plant species disappearing forever. Um, it's not replaceable, it's happening right now. Uh, actually, today, uh, there's 6,000 indigenous people gathering in the streets of Brasilia, the capital of Brazil, to protest because their life is on the line, and the forest is on the line, and so many plants and animals are on the line, and oxygen for all of us also is at stake here. Uh, so this is the last ancient forest standing on the planet. There's little pockets here and there on Earth, but the Amazon is the last real uh, rainforest. And this one, we need to protect it, and we need to uh, empower and stand uh, in solidarity with all the people that live in this forest. That's the indigenous people. There's about 300 tribes. That's about 6,000 people. And um, on the re uh, upon the release of Amazonia, we uh, put together an initiative, a charity, uh, to raise money to to empower these uh, communities. We have managed to raise $300,000 with the help of uh, some famous musicians like Slash, uh, Metallica, Mastodon, Korn, uh, everybody uh, answered our call and we sold instruments and we asked people to donate and, and uh, yeah, 300000 uh, $300, for and they were able to buy some land and uh, to, to buy some drones because they are victims of a lot of brutalities from the Brazilian government who obviously is interested in the land, land grabbing, monoculture, uh, cattle raising, and the clients are us, uh, North America, Europe. So it's a very imp important message to me because it's there's something at stake here and we have the key to the problem. Uh, so I, yes, I, I would like to invite uh, every single person that uh, hears this to uh, um, educate themselves on the problem. I don't, there is no simple solution. One of the solutions I can, the first that comes to my mind would be to reduce your consumption of meat. And if you do eat meat, uh, make sure it's not coming from Brazil because what's happening over there is irreversible. Last question, obviously, you know, the rock and metal world suffered a huge loss a couple of weeks ago with Taylor Hawkins. Can you just talk about what he meant to the genre? Yeah, obviously, uh, it affects everybody, um, the whole music community and all the fans. And uh, uh, it's not the first time that um, a beautiful soul, a fragile soul, is uh, sacrificed on the altar of uh, entertainment and rock and roll, you know. 
and we all all about going out on the road and giving everything for that but it has there's a price to pay it's really 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 hard on the on the mental on the soul on the families we leave kids behind uh, it's hard on everybody and um, I think that um, he's simply another victim of this thing um, it's, it's a bit more complicated than people can think the life of a rock star is not always easy it's a lot of nights on buses and being away from home for a long time so um, yes it touched all of us of course. thank you so much thank you very much Talk to El King. She's nominated for Miranda Lambert. I know. Her country do her group. Okay, great. Hey, hey girl, how are you? I'm good. 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 How are you? Did everything get tested? Your test today, obviously. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. We're here. Thank you so much. How are you doing? Good to see you. I know, I know I've taken up a lot of your time this weekend, so I'll keep it quick. First off, uh, man, the fit is, we talk, already talked about, you know, just your outfits this weekend, man. How did you choose this? What's up, baby? I just came to give you a little L. <laughs> My bro. What's good, man? Good you, baby. Congrats with everything. One of the, one of the greatest voices in R&B media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all can't play with me on it. I put on my glasses so you really see my real eyes. But nah, man, love, bro. Man, love, Continue. bro. Continue. You fly too, boy. Man, congrats, man. Good to see you. Real quick, real quick. Just, I, just got, I want you to ask this question, too. Just about the return of R&B music. It was never lost. But it wasn't necessarily as popular the last 10 years. And artists say, like you guys. Let me say this. Um, um, social media can make people that are undecisive or still haven't found their real plantation. You understand? Being planted somewhere. They don't understand where they are. And social media can help people have other routes of trying to get there. But it all leads back to soul music. When you listen to Bound, Fall in Love, that's a soul symbol under there. When you listen to some of your best uh, rap records, it's soul music under there. We ain't never going nowhere. We here forever, man. And I say that with confidence, bro. Mm -hmm. I'll be happy to see my brother move the way he moved because... Um, soul music, it chooses us, we don't choose it. So honestly, man, um, we can't get away from that. So us loving what we do, and us understanding even the more who we are and doing it, I think it's only right for y'all to continue to watch the movie, you know what I'm saying? Man, so shout out to my good friend Gabby, who helped facilitate the fit, and um, this is a brand called Pat, and there's like, Blue bonnets that represent Texas, and then you got some magnolias on here that represent magnolias on 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 good gold diggers, and so um, kind of a Spanish settlers inspired kind of thing. But uh, I just like to look good, you know. It's like, man, uh, shout out to John Matisse, you know. Shout out to Jasmine Sullivan. Shout out to her. Um, 
you know, shout out to Justin Bieber, you know, all those, you know, those are all people that inspire, inspire me, and there's so many people that, that are nominated that inspire me that I can't even, you know, think on top of my head right now, but, uh, man, I'm just, just happy to be here. Thank you for always stopping by. I definitely appreciate you. Appreciate you, of course. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. It's all fine. Thank you, guys. John Popper, Blues Traveler. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm here with uh, Jay Balvin and Maria Becerra. They're both performing. Um, yes, ba Balvin is performing with Maria Becerra, and it's kind of his moment to, you know, also bring in new emerging talents into the U.S. stage as well. And Maria is going to be featured in Camila Cabello's album coming out on Friday, and the single video is coming out in two weeks. So I just wanted to let you know. Okay, great. You'll see Maria a year, she went from 2 million monthly uh, listeners on Spotify to 20 million. She went from 2 million monthly uh, listeners on Spotify to 20 million. <laughs> yes, that's, and then Camila like Cabello, you know. She's about to pass really big. Sorry I dropped it. Yeah. I'll see you then. <laughs> Oh, thank you. This is so cool. Like, thank okay, you. So who is it, and how did you know this is the look you wanted? Um, this is Christian Siriano, and I just trusted him. Um, he knows how to dress all types of bodies, and I, I really celebrate that about him. Um, he was the only person that I reached out because I'm a new mom, and I'm, I'm kind of adjusting to whatever my body is going to be like, you know, postpartum. And I just wanted to feel powerful. I wanted to feel like myself. I wanted to actually enjoy the Grammys this time. And uh, I feel like he killed it. <laughs> oh, he absolutely killed it. He's beautiful. I mean, Thanks. Being a new mom, just going through the Grammys experience in Vegas, tell me about, like, this whirlwind. Uh, it's a beautiful experience. We ended the tour in Vegas, so we got a couple of days off. I have not gambled yet, which is shocking for me. Um, and I don't know. I'm just I'm here for the party. I'm here to celebrate everyone, all the creativity that has been you know, put out into the world in the last year or so, and especially after everything that we've gone through as a world together. It's nice to be together again. I can't wait to see performances. Honestly, I'm here for the outfits, so let's be real. Are we all? Yeah. Well, I want to see what Miranda's wearing, too. I don't think she's going to. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's too bad. That's too bad. You didn't hear that from me. She might show up. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But tell me about being nominated with her, going through that experience with her. Um, I did not expect it. It wasn't even on my radar. I never thought in a million years a song called Drunk and I Don't Want to Go Home would ever get nominated. Uh, I was folding and putting away diapers and my friend texted me, congrats, and I was like, for what? I had the baby like months ago. She was like, you're nominated for Grammy. And I texted Miranda, oh my gosh. And she was like, no. Because both of us, we just had to laugh. We just had to laugh. It was, but isn't that what life is about? It's just about beautiful surprises and, and when you put out things and, and, and try to be your most authentic self, then life can unfold for you and God can show you many blessings. So. Yeah. Very hot. <laughs> what is your experience with Vegas with this Grammy? I have not gambled yet, like I said. So I'm just I'm waiting. I know there's a casino nearby. Oh, there's slot machines close. What's your game? What's your, what do you like to do? I like blackjack and uh, I like penny slots. Honestly, I can only be myself. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love blackjack. Have so much fun. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's worth it. Oh, thank it's you. I think so too. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. Are you warm? I am warm. I'm going up to Smart. Smart. You're going with the three in the block color. Am I? Yeah. Sick. Really? Yeah. Well, then I'm doing something right. You are doing something right. So, anyway, nomination. How are you feeling? I feel great. I mean, this was a big surprise. It's Julia Cunningham here from Sirius XM. Thank you. 
I'm Amanda, AP. So nice to meet you. You too. Uh, you look amazing. Thank you. Tell me about your morning, getting ready. Were you listening to music? Were you drinking champagne? What oh, was yeah. Morning? I had some sea bass this morning. Give me a little energy. Okay. I put on my Dolce Cabana, custom, paid for. Tiffany, look like money. <laughs> had a good time. Just uh, got myself a bright bob and ready for the car. And how do you feel about this nomination? Talk to me about what this means to you. Look at my eyes. I'm ecstatic. I'm happy. I'm glad to be here, and I'm ready to take it home to the bill, no cap. <laughs> a win. What does that mean for your career? If you it, have for my career, for my state, for my city, for J. Cole, for 21 so It means a lot. I just, I just really want to take it home. My first time being here. So if I take it with me, I did so. No cap. I did so. <laughs> you said your state, your home, where are you from? North Carolina. Fayetteville. Yes, ma'am. Same place, J. Cole. Okay, so coming from North Carolina to the Grammys, yeah. in Vegas, and to see to the Grammys. What are the emotions you feeling? I'm happy. Like if you can't tell, I can't. My cheeks hurt. I'm trying to stop smiling. I'm trying to keep it gangster, but it's hard. I'm, I'm happy. And, and what's your review of Vegas as a location? It's a little warm out here. It's warm, but it's beautiful. Like it's really pretty. People are moving. It's bustling. It's still work day going. So it's, it's lit. I love it. Oh God, I love it. Are you a gambler? I, I'm a bad one, but I would consider myself a gambler because I lose a lot of money. Uh, blackjack. I oh. love blackjack, but I don't know where to stop. I, I take the deal as a challenge. Don't challenge me. And now I'm under $1,000, and I got to walk away. 
My husband doesn't know when to stop either. It's like a... Uh, it's fun. It's just fun. It's not fun when you're losing, though. I think because... It's I don't know. I don't take it too serious. Yeah. Hey, hey, I'm going to make more music. I'm going to make more money. I'm going to move down some more. Come back to Vegas. Yes, ma'am. Again. again. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. So lovely talking to you. You as well. Congrats. Have fun. Yes, I will. Good luck. Thank you. Go. Do it. Should I get out of your way for B-roll? I don't know if you got it. Be careful. Be careful. That's because you're electric, man. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that. So, how are you feeling about, about just even being nominated? I'm just happy. Like, bro, like the, 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 the amount of smiles that I have from my hotel to here, it's not going to come out. So I'm, I'm going to do it in there. So it's like, I don't know how to place it. I'm just blessed. I'm blessed. It's amazing. Is that yeah. Where were you? What were you doing? Where did you find out you had nominated? I was in my house. I seen it on a mention on Instagram. It said, Moray, J. Cole, two more slaggers. I'm about to Like, it's like a 
Jackson Brown. Nice to meet you. Thanks for stopping. So, eighth Grammy nomination. Tell me what this means to you at this point in your career. Well, it's always an honor to be nominated, but I was particularly, particularly honored to be in, nominated in this Americana category with such great artists, you know, with Yola, with Allison Russell, with Los Lobos, John Hyatt. Uh, you know, it's, it's, um, for me, that's, since, since the nomination has been like just been like a great uh, affirmation of, of my work, and uh, I could, actually couldn't imagine winning today, so I came here prepared to congratulate the winners, and uh, that's what I'm going to do. Well, you've been to the Grammys before, but now you're yeah. in Vegas. It's a little warm. You've got your leather jacket on. I mean, how, what do you think about Vegas? What's your review so far? I like Vegas. Something always good happens in Vegas. I mean, I always see to it that something good always happens here. For me, it was last night. I was getting to hang with my friends Leslie and Steve. Steve McEwen, who just won a, a Grammy for, for Best Song with um, with John Baptiste. And he and Leslie... Mendelssohn and I wrote a song for the album that was nominated okay. called A Human Touch and uh, 
Well, we've been to Las Vegas together before because she was opening for Roger Daltrey. I mean, we're like a, we're a crew, so uh, yeah. it was fun. It was Any iconic Vegas things you've done this trip? Um, yeah. There was a three-hour line to get your credentials. You know, you have to like line up and you have to like wait three hours. And I had already, my manager waited for mine, but they were stuck in this line and I brought them tequila in the line and we just had a, you know, tequila while we waited for the line. Like, it's like, it was like a three hour cocktail party. A little more liberal about walking around the booth here, huh? <laughs> yeah, you don't have to have anybody's permission. But where's your tequila now? What's that? Oh, well, it's, it's, it's at the end of this line. It's one more line. So you're, how many people do I have to talk to? Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so thank much. You. It's Thanks nice to meet you. Hi, Fabio Florin, nominated for Donda, album coming. Yes, yes, yes. the man of the hour now i know i know who you are but just for our producers back home um, oh yeah five year foreign good bow move by bow i'm saying i ain't know i was the man of the hour though no, you're the man of the hour man saying. you're on you're on everybody's playlist man uh, how's yeah. this moment been like I, I mean it'd be crazy i'm just i'm just trying to make sure i don't mess nothing up that's it that's <laughs> it yeah i gotta ask about the fit tell me how it all came together oh i just hit up jenna up and i'm saying good stylist you should hit up lavelle that's the good designer i'm saying he threw some pearls on me of course, I had to do the mask, the helmet thing, you know, because I'm you me and Ye, you know what I'm saying? I had to do some shit like that, you know what I'm saying? Falling the curses, you know what I'm saying? Man, well, speaking of Ye, man, you were just, you know, this, I got to say the standout voice on Donda, in my, my opinion, okay, man. I appreciate it. What was it like working with Ye? Um, it was a movie. Like, he real, he real, he, he a good person, you know what I'm saying? Real easy, he, I, a lot of, he care a lot, you know what I'm saying? So he'll come to everybody I'm with, you know what I mean? Um, take care of me. I'm saying make sure I'm good, make sure I feel good, and it just makes sense. You know, during the pandemic, you know, we saw a lot of people kind of go under the radar, but you kind of blew up during the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't play no games. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> How did that happen? Um, I don't know. I just, you know what I'm saying, stay active on the internet. Saying radio love me. I love the people. Every time you see me, I'm going viral. So. They said New York was dead, but no, you know, I don't know. Who said that? Back. Who said that? A lot of people who said that. Let me know who <laughs> said that. Let me know who said that. <laughs> Lastly, man, obviously, you know, a lot of us were looking forward to hearing, you know, yeah, this would have been his time, but, you for know, sure. do you think that the Grammy should have let him perform and that social media had nothing for to do? For sure, hell yeah, why not? I mean, why they stopped him? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, why not? Hell yeah. Should have been the greatest show on earth. Hey, this would have been his time, his city, everything. Yeah, hell yeah. All right, man, I love what you're doing, man. We're going to have to do something special soon, man. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. I'm with it. I'm with it. All right, man, congrats. All right, thank you.
Yeah, good. I see Tiffany Haddish over there. Can you get some beer on? No, she's on, actually on the stand, like posing. Um, well, she's walking away now, so it's fine. guys are very dapper, so first off, tell me about how you guys chose the outfits. Um, I'm wearing a um, cow chic Valentra. Um, I have a, got a stylist who was my first stylist for the Grammys, so it's been really cool to make that full, you know, complete circle. And um, Louis Vuitton on the boot. And I'm feeling fine, man. I'm feeling super fly. Just got some pearls yesterday. What you working with, you? <laughs> so I'm, I'm going a little bit of a potpourri, man, this, uh, on this one. Uh, I was a little uninspired and a week ago. I was walking, went into the mall, went into, looked, I saw those pants, Hugo Boss. I'm like, that's it. I'm going to build around that. Just piece it all together, man. Just doing random stuff today. No no particular vibe or theme, you know. It's ready to work. Yeah, yeah. Seamless Trying to keep up with together, you, man. Look at that pin right there. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Now, obviously, the band has just been uh, in Vegas this year. It's always in L.A. Just talk about the experience so far. How have you guys enjoyed it? Honestly, it's been surprisingly fun. I mean, I'm from Los Angeles, and so I was a little downhearted when um, when I heard the news. But you know, you know, I, I'm, I'm I'm having a lot of fun. I'm actually embarrassed to say that I probably just woke up like five hours ago. You know, so, you know. Now, obviously, you guys have two nominations, right? But I'm always wondering, like, when you're creating something, when do you know that you have something? There had to be some moment where it's like, man, like, we, we might have something here. When we first started recording, literally the very first day we met, 2017, I don't remember, summer, early fall, I, I, I was I was sitting down, we're hitting record, and he was back there at the, in the booth with the mic, and I, I mean, my hair just stood up when I heard his voice. I was like, God damn. But I had to play it cool, you know, I was just like, oh, that was cool, man. Yeah, it was all good. You know, but I mean, I, we, I, I mean, I seriously knew. And then when we played our first show, 2018, I remember walking off and kind of like pulled each other aside. We were like, damn, okay, here we go. Here so what, we are. About, what about with this album? What did you guys know? There a moment during the recording well process? yeah for sure for sure I think and I think that that moment is now you know I think that that moment is constantly being being lived through I mean I was just saying to someone that uh, you know we just came out of a period where all of our pains and anxieties have been amplified and magnified to the extent that I feel like maybe it was a really great time to kind of retreat and now I feel more inspired than ever. You know, I feel elevated by my collaboration with my counterparts to the degree that I'm, I'm utilizing more and more tools that I, that I didn't use before for songwriting. And uh, it seems like Adrian's inspired by, by me to an extent as well. So, you know, we're constantly inspiring each other and this is what we absolutely love to do, red carpet or not. So, we're stoked. 
And lastly, you know, Music World lost such, you know, an enormous figure over weeks ago with Taylor Hawkins. You know, what did you do just to rock to music, to just fans all over? Well, Taylor Hawkins was, uh, I almost tear up now. I mean, I, I didn't know Taylor Hawkins uh, personally, but um, I had heard that uh, he would kind of sit side stage on at, like a two of our shows, um, or at least at least one festival that we did oh, together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, we heard of his passing at a festival that we were supposed to play together about an hour before we went on. So we had a you know a, a moment of silence with the audience, and we played a really interesting set. You know, so but. It's, you know, it's, 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 it's tough. That's, that's, it's, 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 that's heavy. It's heavy news. Like, what did you say about the rock and roll soldiers? Yeah, there was, I have a friend, a friend who, who passed a couple of years ago. He was a live, live sound engineer. He used to always say, like, man, we're all rock and roll soldiers out here. We got one, one man down. We all got to walk, pick him up and all be together. You know, and I was telling Eric that night. It's like, he was like, he used to say rock and roll army, man. And, you know, at some point, certain point, like, you, you start to feel this connection with, other live bands and touring ensembles and families and you realize that we're all out here you know doing it together and we're all somewhat connected even though we don't know each other personally I love that. all right guys well congratulations thank again. you thank you man thanks for all this stuff for buying. Thank, thank you bro good to see you man yeah. 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 are you all ready for uh vicky guyton yes So, first off, tell me about this gorgeous dress. You are radiating today. You know, I wanted to look like a Grammy. It's the Grammy, you know what I mean? It's by Ashish. The shoes are by Stuart Weitzman. The ears are by, earrings are by um, Alexis Latar. And this is our interpreter to make sure there's inclusion here. I love that. And speaking of inclusion, obviously you are the first black woman to be nominated for Album of the Year in country. Like. I'm just so grateful. Honestly, I don't have time. I I don't always think about the accomplishments that have happened for me over the last two years because I'm like, it's just mom world and we're also still kind of locked down at times. But it's just truly, I just feel so honored. I didn't do it to be the first. I did it because I felt like it was important. And, and now my mission is really about supporting black artists. And I am... Uh, an example, I am. I show people that you should invest in black talent and black art. Like, we're just as important. Just give us the opportunity, and there's so much possibility. Is it that I want to make sure I, I word this right, but not bittersweet, but obviously a lot of attention on black artists, especially in country and music, came out of the George Floyd and social justice, you know, uprising. So I'm just curious about your thoughts because I'm glad we can't look back, but we don't know what would have happened to George Floyd. You know, yeah. honestly, I like I'm glad you even brought that up because that's something that I've thought about and I found it hard with with finding success is it took that. It took someone's life for all of us to see. Like the whole world saw this man's life taken from him, stolen from him. And it took that for people to finally see people like me and people like you. And that's that's a hard, that's something hard that you like, I don't even know how to like, you get what I'm saying. I don't understand how to like completely feel about it. <laughs> You know, like the good you, thing is that now absolutely, we, are we and we are here. But you know, like even my song "Black Like Me," I wrote that song like two years, like in 2018, and it was my own personal feelings. And when it was out there, it was a beautiful thing to see it take on the life that it did. But it was also like it was such a hard moment for all of us, I think. Right? Like I, it was a heavy, heavy time then for all of us. So. It was hard to celebrate sometimes. Well, I know that you're the first, but I hope that you continue to yes. breaking oh. down barriers. Oh, it is happening. <laughs> like, it is happening. Like, you evidence. Enjoy it. I know you're yeah, here. yeah. It's, it's beautiful. And I am I am learning to enjoy it. That's something I'm trying to learn. But it's it's beautiful to see, you know, every time I go to a, a country award show and seeing them actually actively trying to bring representation into this beautiful genre. Show that we're all important. We all should be included. Well, lastly, have you done anything fun in Vegas? This is oh, yeah. City. Last night, my husband and I, we went and did play blackjack. We were on <laughs> the slot. Ma lot I'm not a gambler. Let's just say that. Okay? Like, let me just enjoy it. Like, 
But then we went to a club. We had a great time. I had a great time in Vegas. Yes, exactly. Thank you so much. Oh yeah, we saw. Yeah, we just talked to you. Yeah, that's right. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, Having to do so much at the at the last minute, but just you know booking travel for family to come out from Cali to Vegas, that was the whole thing. Getting dressed, but now we're here, man. It's solid. How's it been so far in Vegas? Because you know, obviously, it's always in LA. Yeah, no, it's crazy. It's a different vibe. Um, I threw a party yesterday at Live Oak. It was crazy. Um, today, you know, hopefully Nas. Either way, he gonna perform. So if he win, we go back to back best rap album. I might stay out here for two more weeks and just go crazy. And you and Nas, I I've said that maybe since. Illmatic, these past two albums, and obviously you've done with them, like maybe his best work since then. In my personal opinion, man, what's it been like working with, you know, one of the goats? Man, just having his uh, trust and having his support with the, the music that I provide, like the beats I play him, like he always excited to just come in the studio. That's, that's priceless, you know what I'm saying? Like it's not about, you know, me being me or him being Nas. We just we want to add to the culture and add to the music and just make the best product possible. That's what makes us great, I feel like. Well, lastly, man, you know, Ye isn't here. We're missing such a big presence. Do you feel like he should have still been allowed to, to perform at the Grammys, despite whatever was happening on social media? I mean, I, I don't know the ins and outs for real. I don't know the private conversations or what was really, you know, going through whoever's mind that made the decision, but it is what it is. Kanye got 20-something Grammys, man. He, he's, he's really solid out here. I would have loved to see that performance. That would have been great. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, congrats on all your accomplishments, man. You really Thank you, man. Appreciate, I appreciate it. it. Yes, sir. Look, bro, I, was, I wouldn't even think so. I know, right? I know, right? I started I know, right? 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 Hi, Gary. I have Anjali Kicha here. She just won. She's a five-time nominee. Can I Can I give you a card? Sure. Just, I'll ask a couple of questions. I think you guys cut in front of us. Oh, no. Okay. No worries. Just go, bro. All right. She moved. She moves in. Oh, hi. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Now, I don't even know. Are those claws? Are those nails? Are that those. That bus. I love them. So, first off, tell me about this amazing outfit. I think you probably love this dress. Ah, well, thank you. Um, This was designed by Sho Kanishi. I was styled by. Um, the wonderful Scott Louis. Um, we were talking about just my love of like Afrofuturism with the look and just avant garde looks. And so we were going through and we came up with this. Show's vision is just singular and wild. <laughs> I love it. Wild. I love, I love it. it. You know, I'm curious, you know, during the pandemic, um, a lot of people changed the way they did music, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering, did you make any changes? Well, for the first record, I was literally in the room, we were creating the song in the room at the time. Start, finish in three hours, right? This next record was songs from way back, and then songs just written on my own, that I would then take into the room to get like little tweaks, once we were able to get into a space together. And so a lot more of my DNA is on this record. And that's what makes it so meaningful for it to be nominated, you know. I love that. Well, lastly, I got to talk to you this, talk to you about this the other night. You know, we're in Vegas. It's yes. been silly. Have you done anything fun? No, I've been trying to keep it together. I say I've done nothing fun, but I've done all the things fun. Because I was at Music Cares, and I got to honor Joni Mitchell, who was an icon. And there was so much love in the room. I got to play with Wendy and Lisa, who are icons. If you know anything about Prince, you'll know that they were the right-hand people making so many of the things that we know and love. Um, yeah, and then I was at the um, Back Music Collective, and that was emotional, like profoundly emotional. The we, we've got work to do, you know, and so that 
that felt really meaningful. So I've kind of done all the fun things, but not traditionally Vegas fun things. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, you are always a pleasure to talk to. And Thank you. Look you. Gorgeous. So thanks Thank for stopping you. by. Mm -hmm. Thank so you, darling. You. I'm going to get my people to rotate me. Hi, rotating friends. Thank you. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, so indeed, yeah. just shimmy across. across. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry about that. That's the worst thing. Okay. No. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. I like that dress. I like your pink. You know, oh, this is cute. I like that. Yes. African designer. Well, then you're going to tell me about it right now. <laughs> So I am Gary Hamilton with the Associated Press here in Vegas, and I am here with Angelique Kijo. Now, first off, your outfit is beautiful. I love the paint. Can you tell me how you chose it? Uh, it's an African designer from Cameroon called Imana Isi that is the only black designer in the high rank in France. And he's a friend of mine. So I said to him, I'm going to the Grammy. And he goes, oh, really? Do you have something to wear? I said, maybe. Do you have any idea? But come here. And he put this prototype on me and he said, this is what I'm going to do for you. Brand new. Let me see if I have the fabric left. Bing. We do one week. This dress is done. So I love it. I love the fact that he always used um, European fabric with African material all the time. Now you're nominated for Best uh, Global it's Music Album, so and I'm just wondering what it means, so you know, for the Academy to recognize, you know, global and music. Because sometimes people can kind of focus only on one thing, but I'm glad that you're doing that kind of recognition. I mean, the thing is, um, before it was called world music, that used to drive me crazy. And I've said it so many, many times and many years, so finally we come to the conversation that we all have to sit at, around the table with other African artists in, on the continent to find a way that we can be represented that don't feel patronizing. So we come, we all come globally, uh, collectively to global performance and global world music and uh, global album. So that's a, a great step. I don't know any award in the yeah, world so. that does yeah. such a thing yeah, to be inclusive of minorities and, and really working hard to get the diversity into the uh, recording academy. And I've been, I've been coming, I've been nominated since 1992. And I've seen the academy grow and taking on the challenge of the, an ever-changing world. We need to help. And they are willing to educate. So let's do it together and bring the whole planet on this world for diversity to really exist not only on world, because talk is cheap, action is expensive. Let's put the action where we say they're going to be and open the door for all. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. No, no, they gave me the hardest. They were like, one of them. They were like, everyone was like, ooh, that's not easy. I'm like, ah, I'm excited. It was so much fun. I love it. I love it. In my mind, I was kind of getting a bit of sensation. And I think people were like, I heard that you were like, what do you mean? And I'm like, yeah, I was. It was, if that was fun. And so like, yeah, we did that. I first going with Quincy and Lisa, the icons. If you know anything about friends, you'll know that. Let's do this. And so that was just emotional so I managed to make this up a little bit. And then I'll hang. I just wanted to know what Okay, cool. Dr. I just Silva, want to know what Silva,
Hi, Amanda, Associated Press of Liz Sullivan. How are you guys? It's been really good. We're great. <laughs> great. Tell me about the press. Oh, this is a custom piece by Three is Four. Yeah. I really love the people, and I'm just so honored to wear it. How did you know it was the one? Oh, I mean, I just, I saw it, and I knew. I spelt it, tried it on. It feels like a thunder shirt that you give, like, dogs during uh, thunderstorms, which is really helping your girl, so. so you're, you're feeling comforted now. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, weight it down. <laughs> no nerves, but just yeah. very hot. No, yeah, no nerves, just heat. Uh, and tell me what would a Grammy win tonight mean for you guys? Oh, well, let's see. We didn't win ours, but if we had one, I think I'm just happy to be here. Yeah, I honestly don't know if this could get any better. Yeah. We're here. We watched the Tar Heels win last night. LeVar Burton introduced us at the ceremony earlier today. I don't, a win would have been great, but like, does it really get a ton better than this? This yeah. is pretty good. Just being invited is really wonderful. Do you think the pandemic kind of makes, puts things um, in perspective and makes you a little more grateful or I'm not, I feel like I'm going to know how the pandemic has changed my perspective in about 25 years. And uh, and even then, I think like we'll, we're probably all going to be processing it for the rest of our lives. So right now, I'm just grateful to feel a little joy. <laughs> just live in the moment. Yeah. Thank you. You're so funny. You did be nominated for comedy album. <laughs> Very nice. Have a great night, you too. I love this eyeshadow, too. Thank, Thank you. you. Amanda with AP, I'm here with Allison Russell. It's my first time at the Grammys, first time, three time nominee, and it's all just such wonderful pageantry and so much inspiring music. So I'm very happy to be here. As a first timer, what do you think? I love it. I mean, it's been, honestly, it, it started off in such a way that I could have gone home after Music Cares because being part of the tribute to Joni Mitchell and seeing all of the artists who gave such heartfelt speeches of what she means to them and I've been listening to her since I was in my mother's womb. I'm a Canadian too and it was just such a magnificent night of music that it just set the bar so high right there and today has just continued on that. Um, I'm so excited for all the nominees and all the awardees and to hear the performances, to hear Brandy Carlisle play tonight and my dear, dear chosen sister, Sister Strings are playing with her so I'm extra excited for that performance and and all the performances, that, yeah, just being, getting to kind of take it all in for the first time. Take it all in yeah, in every moment. I will. Thank you. Thank Have you so much. much.
I'm super excited. I'm um, super honored to be nominated. We won for um, Song of the Year last year, so it's crazy to be nominated for Song of the Year again this year. And um, yeah, I'm just really honored and excited to be here. Living in the moment in Vegas, huh? Yes, and my whole family's out here. So honestly, like, that's the most exciting part for me. Everybody came out, and you know, I'm just here to, you know, celebrate with my family and have a good time. 100%. Just for my producers back in the office, can you say your name again? My name's Sierra Thomas. Thank you so much. Have so much fun. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. that we work with and I know how much this song means to Justin so because of that it means so much more to me you know, and just watched him create the entire thing sitting right there with him you know it was very effortless and very fun and you know when art comes to this kind of a stage when it was so effortless like that and not really trying too hard it's beautiful are you guys, are you guys having a, like a text thread what's your conversation about this Grammys it's uh you know we're excited very excited. Uh, I saw some fun like, shots of him performing, performing recently. So, yeah. From your perspective, just like... He's, he's in the top of his game right now. Beyond. And the performance is going to be incredible. Okay. Really? Okay. Me too. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Well, Enjoy the see. show. Thank okay. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Bye. Jeff, can you get some B-roll shots of Watt? I think Watt, Ryan wants Watt. I'll get out of the way. Oh. Oh, 
talks about that. Can we shoot this guy in the blue? I don't have blue hair. Legend. Legend, hey bud. Legend. Wait for me, bud. Okay, never mind. Oh, 
Okay, yeah, sure. Hi, so are you guys going to have an issue with how about this particular? Yes, we are. Country group. Hi, I'm I recognize her hair and I just don't see her I don't see her on a podium like I don't I don't understand where she is now
sacrifices we've made and to get to this point and I will say that if you like or love our music we've definitely tried to be different and try to be original and and sometimes that pays off and sometimes it doesn't it's gonna be really really a slow process and to be here tonight having now won a Grammy it really felt like okay all of that was not for nothing we have been recognized and just simply you know in this life just simply being acknowledged is something is more worth more than the money or anything so it, it, it feels incredible I saw your comments and your speech, and they were so special. And I just, I mean, did you ever picture, you know, being out and being, uh, you know, for country and being at this moment in this space and winning for this? No, I definitely, I mean, there was. You know, I think that was my biggest fear before I came out was that I, I wouldn't be able to have my profession that I loved and I've worked so hard to, to have. Um, and now that I have come out, I didn't know what it was going to be like, and it's so much better than I ever imagined. My life is just happier, but then to be uh, accepted into just the country community, accepting me that they, the way they've done over the past couple of years, and then to be here tonight in front of the, uh, all of the, the members of the academy was... Um, it's it's just it's, it's it's ineffable. It's impossible to explain, but it's it's certainly magical, and I, w I wouldn't. God, I just wish everyone could get to, to feel this. Yeah, you know, I'm a country fan. Growing up, I'm not sure I would have guessed that country would embrace that. Like in my, you know, I mean, I, w I didn't think so either. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as a young boy, I mean, did you have this thought like I would not be accepted or kind of thing? Yeah, well, I mean. Yeah, I, I think the thing is in life, I think we all are trying to be accepted in life for who we are. We all are fearful of people maybe seeing sides of us that we don't like about ourselves or think are, or don't fit in socially to whatever group of people we typically hang around. And, um, and I think, you know, that's one of the things I do actually also enjoy about getting older. The more older I get, the more I, I do realize that the more I love myself, and that's really all I need at the end of the day. And, uh, and then it, it made me feel a lot less fear in that regard, but it certainly... Um, the acceptance I've had, not only from the the, uh, the country music community in, in Nashville, the business, but from the fans, and to be able to come out here and do this and see the different types of fans that have come out to our shows now, and feeling like they can be who they are, it's been it's been it's been absolutely the most fulfilling thing that's ever happened. You guys are Grammy winners. What's your best Grammy song, dance, celebration? Like <laughs> we haven't even had a chance to celebrate. We've been we won a Grammy. We ran off of the out of the uh, pre-tell, went straight to rehearsals. And from her, I went from rehearsals, I had to like pat myself down because I'm sweating and I'm like having a heart attack. And then we went straight over here. So we haven't even begun to celebrate yet. So. <laughs> oh, we are. Yeah. Trust me, I will take advantage of that. <laughs> All right, well, maybe I'll see you out there. Yeah, see you. <laughs> yeah. See you. Thank you very much. Sorry. Yes, yes, we're holding for Rachel. Sorry. Yes, yes.
Oh my gosh, it's actually custom Dior Couture, Maria Grazia, my girl, um, and Tiffany Jewels. And I mean, I, I don't know, we, we, were, we were going back and forth about this for a while when we were figuring out all of the award season press and everything that we were doing. And something so delicate and feminine about this dress while we're in the middle of making Snow White, it just felt like the right pick. So Thank you. And I was really hoping to talk to you last week at the Oscars because I just love Oh God, did I miss you? I'm so sorry. No, it's okay, but I love your Oscar story because you went Thank from you. like your plan was like sweatpants. Yeah, couch, his flannel. Josh's flannel I was going to wear. Yeah, I mean, and then we ended up there, which was crazy and totally, genuinely unintentional, believe it or not. Um, and I, yeah, we, that dress we were putting together for a while and when the invite didn't come through, we just kind of stopped working on it. And then all of a sudden the invite was in and we are like, oh my God, we're going to make the dress. It was another custom Dior beautiful and uh i loved it they i mean it was originally on the red carpet with like silver and then we made it black which is i thought really really beautiful and chic so beautiful thank and you what was it like being in the room for the slap and are you over talking about the slap i'm overhearing about it i don't talk about it i don't know i gotta echo the sentiments of daniel radcliffe is aren't you bored hearing people's opinions i am <laughs> so yeah <laughs> Can I ask you about Snow White? Yes. I really do want to talk to you about that. You're talking about bringing Snow White to life. Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, it's an iconic cartoon. It's 85 years old. And Mark Webb is so, our, our director is so dedicated to making a hero princess for his daughter. And I just really love that sentiment. And I hope that it gets echoed for all eternity when we make live action versions of these Disney cartoons where women are seen a little bit as less than the male characters. I just think that it's possible to be a princess and a hero. And I like to be both. Thank you so Thank much. You. Have, have a great Thank you. Have a good one. Right. You also, so I think, looking back, you almost have to thank that younger person and yourself that brought you to this, to this, to this part of your life. I mean, if it wasn't that little kid sitting in front of the radio learning how to play guitar, I wouldn't be here. So in a way, it's just about celebrating like those crazy decisions following your dreams is insane. And the fact that your younger self did it, you have that person that's yeah. And I think you, when we finished writing it, in our minds, we weren't like, wow, this is going to be great for Grammy worthy. It was, wow, like, this is something we needed to say. We wanted to say this is the whole point of music. And we, we were emotional. We wrote it, we were crying multiple times, writing the song. Um, and then to now, I mean, at this moment, it just really uh, Harv coming, he's performing with Justin Bieber tonight. That's H A R V, Harv. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi, Harv. How are you doing? Oh, great. I'm Amanda with AP. Okay, nice so to meet you, nice Amanda. You. Here we are. Oh, no, oh. I, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I feel like you're, like, you, it looked like you was giving it to no, me, so I'm sorry. It happens, it happens. Okay. So I'm like, it's all good. Her, so that's it's, all good. it's all good. We're sharing it. Yes. So yeah. you're performing with Justin tonight. Yes. Tell me, like, the kind of vibes that you guys talked about what you're trying to bring to the show. Um, actually, we're just going to, you know, keep it simple. Like, if you know the song Peaches, it's a good vibe. Uh, so we really don't want to change it up too much. And I know, you know, it's a big thing tonight, but we're just going to do what we normally do. And how are you feeling about performing? And um, have you talked to Justin about how he's feeling about it? 
Uh, we're just super excited, nervous. Um, for me, it's super like overwhelming a little bit in a good way because just I produced the song and to be able to perform it at the Grammys is it's, it's, it's an unreal feeling. But uh, we're both super excited to perform tonight. So. Can't wait to see it. Yeah. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Have so Thank much you. Fun. Thank you. going to come back in, a, in just a second, I think. Just wait for him to come back. Did you come back, Jeff? Yeah. You're giving him good so shots right now. So much for your patience. Oh, really man. Cool. So Cynthia, read those shots like we can, because she so always so looks like $8 million. Nice. But you look amazing, too. I appreciate Is this you leather? Too. Okay, so leather Dior, how do you know this is the look you wanted today? Um, we were just going through a whole bunch of different clothes and I'll put it together, you know, a little Celine, little Dior, flex. Yeah, and I have to ask you a big conversation tonight is about, you know, Kanye, Kanye and not performing. Any thoughts on that? I love you, Kanye. Thank you. And then what does tonight mean for you? Tonight means a celebration, you know, I'm nominated for uh, a song I did with Tyler and NBA Youngboy, and then for being on a couple people's albums. So I'm excited for uh, everyone here, and uh, 
you know, it's just always cool to be recognized amongst the greatness, you know? Yes, and we're living in some tough times. What do, what do these carpets mean to you now, these events mean to you now, given, you know, everything we've all been through uh, and going you know, through? Everything we're going through, everything we've been through, we got to just keep on going and staying strong. And uh, it's just happy to be back, you know? Thank you so I'm much. I'm happy to be back. For sure. Have a good day. Thank, Thank you. you for your patience. Thank you. 
First off, tell me about this beautiful outfit. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this is um, actually inspired by Aretha Franklin, but um, Peter Dundas did it. He always gets it, so here we are. I love it, I love it. And how did you feel when you first saw it? Oh my gosh, I was like, this is the one. Just the sketches alone, I was like, this is the one. There's a phoenix on it, and you know, to me it's about growth and rising out of you know, every obstacle and every challenge in life. That's where I'm at right now. Well, I mean, the other place you're at is at the Grammys, and you've been breaking so many records with names like Beyonce and Michael Jackson and Santana. What's it like being her? Man, you know, I'm just grateful. I, I just love music. So the fact that I get to do that every day, I'm, I'll be happy, you know? And, and, of course, to be named amongst people like that is insane, and I never dreamt that it would ever happen. So... Happy to be here. Well, I remember when the mixtapes first came out, and I was, I mean, we still had a little bit of CDs then, and we were downloading them, and we never saw your face, and now we see your beautiful smile. How do you handle the fame, really? Because you're, you're on a roll. You know, it's crazy, because I, I feel like I've, I've been finding a balance. Um, you know, this this woman, uh, to name Michaela, she said something, um, something about how sometimes we equate success to visibility, and I just don't believe in that. You know, I, I believe in the music and doing what I what I do and staying low-key, you know what I mean? But I'm so grateful for that there's fans that love my music, and I'm, I'm on tour now, so it's, to see the people and connect with the people is special as well. But, yeah, you know. Well, last question, because I'm one of those fans who love your music. Has How has the pandemic or has the pandemic changed the way that you make music? Not really. You know, I mean, it definitely was, was very hard, but I think what it forced me to do was really dig deeper and, and get back to me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bonnie right behind you.
She was a, got an icon award at Women in Music Billboard. Yeah, yeah, I know. She's like, we're on the accolades this year. What are we going to do next year? Thank you. I know, she's done with that. Well, she'll figure something out. Okay, where do I go? Right there. I hate it. I hate it. I can't go back and I'll let their publicist send up. <laughs> a lot of the publicists get in the shot of it. Hi. Oh, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I am great. How are you in that mask all day? I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm used to this thing now. Yeah, I, I am too. Sure, I've got you know, extra makeup on my mask knee. <laughs> yeah, you get used to it. So congratulations. Thank Life you. Thank you. What does that mean to you? Oh man, to be recognized by my peers like this when I'm still on tour is really especially sweet that I don't have to retire and then they give me a gold watch or something. So, you know, it's just being, to be acknowledged for being an activist and a leader of a band and a play, play electric guitar and, you know, they like my music. So I, it's been a wonderful thing just to be part of the Grammy Association all this time, but I wasn't expecting to get this Lifetime Achievement Award. So, very sweet. No. After all you've done. No, I mean, I figured maybe in a couple of decades or something, they'd, they'd wheel me out, but I'm really happy to take it tonight. Well, congratulations on that, and also congratulations here at a point in your career where you can really take on a mentorship role, and um, I wanted to ask you about just Olivia Rodrigo, the songwriter, and your thoughts about... Oh, I think, she, I think she's fantastic. I mean, I'm a huge fan of her, and I love Billie Eilish's music, and there's just so many young Roots, American Roots artists, Marcus King, great new blues artist, Catfish, there's just... The music scene has never been richer than it is now. So I don't have a lot of time to physically mention them, but by listening to each other's music and maybe collaborating, we'll get to do it down the line. 100%, you've been to Grammys before. This time it's in Vegas, it's a little warmer here. I mean, how are you feeling about Vegas as the location? I, listen, wherever they moved it, wherever it had the venue, was able to get to, it was great. You know, we planned our tour around this, and I was so glad they were able to reschedule. and. You know, it's like old home week. I just wish we could get up close and kiss and hug each other better. Almost there, right? Yeah, exactly. I'm going to kiss and hug anyway. <laughs> just do it. Exactly. And uh, Joni Mitchell, I know you're presenting with her tonight. Yes. I mean I just love how you guys have just been queens in your field for so long. I mean, talk to me about that a little bit and presenting with her tonight. Well, she's one of my heroes, always has been. And the fact that she's come through some health challenges and come out the other side and you know, just has these house parties and sings Poison Ivy and jazz standards. I mean, she's a real inspiration on how to keep it going. And it's what a painter, too. You know, incredible. So, so you go to Joni Mitchell's parties? Um, Brandy organizes these small gatherings at Joni's house and sort of brought her back after she had her aneurysm and couldn't sing for a while. And she's really, these, the music heals, you know, we all know that. So it sure healed me to play my first live show in two and a half years the other night. Wow, how was that? Yeah. Oh, awesome, awesome, yeah. I, uh, I saw Garth Brooks recently, and just to see him get back on stage, it seems so emotional. It know? is very emotional, yeah. really emotional. Yeah. Nothing like it, so. Well, congratulations. Thank tonight. you, Have thank so you fun. very much. Thank nice so to much talk to you. Thank you, nice to meet you. Hi. Thanks. Hi. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Hi. I'm sorry? David Guetta. Oh. Yeah, yes. bring it. He's, uh, he didn't win TDS, he didn't win, but he's won twice and been nominated ten times. Okay. That's all right. Oh, I'm Hi, David. Hi, Amanda. Nice to meet you. How are you? I'm very good. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Celebrating life and music with real people. 100%. Yeah, in real life without a mask on. Yeah, amazing. That's nice. Amazing. Heard... You're still wearing it, though. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I want to make sure everyone's comfortable. So I heard what happened in your category, but, you know, you're a free people winner. So, but what's it like now? Like, what's the rest of your night look like now that you Oh, no, I'm out? super happy. Honestly, you know, I was... Uh, I was I was happy to be nominated. It's always an honor. Uh, I think uh, Rufus Del Sol, they're dope, and you know, like I, I, I'm I'm totally happy. I'm just happy to be here. It's uh, it's just a big party, you know. Yeah. And sometimes I win, sometimes I don't, but I always come and support, you know. And you're in the party capital of Vegas. Of course, and I have my residency too here. 
at the win, you know, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I started my first show yesterday, uh, you know, after all those, uh, the, the, those years without playing, so I'm, I'm just really happy, you know. How does it feel to be back? Yeah, it's, it's, it's wonderful. Like, I've been waiting for this. Because it's great, you know, like, I'm a DJ, so for me, like, I make music to play it, you know, and, and, uh, and finally I get to do that. Congratulations. Have so much fun tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. I am a little desperate for water. Can I tag team? Okay. I'm so hot. I must be it's hot too. Yeah, pretty nice. How are you doing? Good morning. All right, I'm ready. I just want to make sure we check in with you too. At least that's how we do it in LA. I don't know. Yeah, well, how we do it in LA. I think we're gonna do Jimmy Allen. Jeff, I think I think we're gonna do Jimmy Allen. Busy, so I'll make it quick, man. Nashville. I love the outfit. Uh, first off, how did you come up with it? Oh uh, man, I was sitting around thinking. I was like, okay, I want a gold suit, but I want to put like some patches on, like a mix between a ringmaster, uh, Michael Jackson, and uh, a bottle of champagne. Pretty much what it looks like. Uh, it's like you know, uh, it, but I, I like having fun. You know, trying new stuff. Uh, the suit was. Um, the shoes were made by my friend in Nashville, Styles, Styles by Lee. She designed them. Uh, my friend Steven, who's actually the costume designer on Dance with the Stars, sketched the suit out for me. And uh, uh, Cigaro put it together. So, yeah. I love it. Man. Yeah, man. Now, we can see on the carpet a lot of ESL interpreters. And I'm just wondering, you know, we talk about inclusion mm -hmm. and Coda. Is that something that you guys do? Yeah, I love inclusion. You know, I, a lot of times, you know, as a black male in country music, yes, I talk about inclusion, but inclusion shouldn't stop with what just affects me. You know what I'm saying? I feel like when it comes to inclusion, you have to 
be unselfish. And if you're worried about you being included, you have to take the time and make sure other people that are left out feel included too. So that, you know, so here we are. Got the ASL interpreter um, because I, I feel like I should do more. I feel like we all should do more. I feel like a lot of times we get so wrapped up in our own problems and our own concerns and our own, and our own ways we feel left out, we forget about other people too. And there's nothing wrong with doing what you need to do for your mental health, take care of yourself. But in that process, don't feel like, you know, I, I never want to feel like my problems are bigger than, than anyone else's to where their problems don't matter, uh, because they do. The last question would be, you know, obviously you're nominated for Best New Artist, and I actually posed this question to Mickey. Is it bittersweet that, and bittersweet may be, not be the right word, but that country music and black faces really got a push, but it was because of the social unrest, and, and that's when people really started to kind of take a look at it? Um, I would say... Does that I, make sense? It, it makes sense. I would, I would say this. You know, you can't force interest on people. People are into what they're into. You know what I mean? And... Uh, I just challenge everyone, don't let tragedy or uh, you know, racial issues or pandemics be the reason you try something different. I would say every day, push yourself to become better. Push yourself to expand what you're knowledgeable about. And um, if you ever have any questions about, well, I wonder if this is happening here, if you have black people in this genre of music or Asian people in this genre of music, all, all we got to do is um, get on the computer and look. You know, so um, that's how that's how I look at it. You know, I, it, it just it, when it comes to people's interests, people are into what they're into. So um, you know, we'll whatever happens, whether it's pandemic, racial issues, social issues, political issues, whatever, it brings attention. But I would love to see attention come from people just willing to expand and understand other people. So. It's always a pleasure, man. Good luck. Yeah, Whenever you're in New York, man, I need to come up something. Yeah, I'm in Chile. Thank you. Yeah, we well, I'll be in Chile. Well, then, I'll be in I will see you guys soon. Good. How you doing? Good, man. How are you? I'm good. 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 I'm I saw them parked over there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, no, I don't know. Maybe there's another intro. We are firm fans. We always duck out. Hey, I feel like we would have seen somebody. I got my record bill. I wasn't a streaming success. I didn't have a bunch of followers. I wasn't a social media. But I had 3,000 followers.
time. Is everything pre booked for you guys? Oh, okay. We got the uh, representing Lionel Hampton, we got a lifetime achievement award. Yeah. Okay. The, the entire role is pre booked? Yeah. Oh, okay. See her, yeah, all the silver. Are you able to see her from here? Thank you. 
You look so pretty. Thank you. <laughs> so, you're gorgeous, you're radiant today. Tell me about the outfit. I just wanted to shine from the inside out, and I'm wearing Valentino. I feel like a pretty disco ball, and Tiffany and Jimmy Choo, and I'm so happy to be here tonight. Now, does getting, going to the Grammys ever get old? It never gets old, and I hope next year when I go, I'm getting one for my debut album. <laughs> so, 
Yes. No, because you took the words right out of my mouth, so we are expecting it now. Yes, I am manifesting it. Oh, the album's done. It's just getting mixed right now, but it's all about the timing of this out. But my second single, Treat Me, comes out on April 8th. So on Friday, so it's coming up and it's been so much fun gearing up and prepping and like being around this winning energy before it comes out. So I hope everyone in the world loves it. I love it. Yeah, we saw you teasing it on social media. And you know, what's interesting is like with younger artists, social media plays a huge role as far as promotion. Can you just talk about that? Because back when I was younger listening to albums, there was no social media to promote mm -hmm. music. Yeah, you know, I feel like you just have to be yourself, and I love social media. My sis and I wouldn't be here without YouTube and covers and everyone watching us, so it's only right to just, you know, show who I truly am and promote the music at the same time on there. So. Awesome. Well, lastly, you know, obviously we're here in Vegas. Yes, we are. Have you had any fun? Are you over 21? Yes, oh, okay. I'm 23. So I'm here with my godma, my godbrother, and, you know, Ricky, and, like, we have our whole little clique, and it's so much fun because we've just been hanging out, and tonight I'm like, I got to take an energy drink. I can't go to sleep and cop out. I got to turn up tonight. Gambling or no? No. Oh, okay. No. Okay. You're like, okay, we're gonna I will dance the night away. I love that. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. so sweet when I talk thank to you. Thank you. You too. Thank you.
god, Dylan Ranch. Oh my god, yes, girl. Your eyes are amazing. Oh, Sweetie likes my eyes. <laughs> so we won. How come you're not interviewing us? <laughs>
We got a Kardashian over there, right here, with Travis Barker in pink. He's in pink. It was Rolo's fault. Jeff. Yeah, two questions. We've got to make it quick. What's up, man? How are you? Good to see you again. Nah, you look sharp. This is last round. All right, I know you got to get in, so I'll make it quick, man. But the fit is on fire, man. Tell me about it. I just, Chanel made me this for tonight. Just custom Chanel, you know? Not something, something light. You know? you put it on? I felt amazing. Like Chanel is classic, elegant, timeless, and I, I hope it translates on the carpet right now. So it definitely yeah. does, yeah, man. And you. obviously, just talk about you know working with Justin Bieber. When you guys were creating Peaches, did you know? Like, did you think you had something? I I thought the song was good. You know, I enjoyed it. But after I make songs and make it, I, I really don't think about what the song could be because I feel I don't know if I'm in control of that. So I just try to make songs that I really like and enjoy. And I was like, you know, if people enjoy the song half as much as I do, then it could be something in it. End up being a, a very successful song, I should say. Well, I can't wait to see what you guys do. Yes, tonight, man. Thank you so Thanks much. For all this stuff I appreciate it. Every time. Thank you.
Associated, not for the Associated Press. John. That was lame. Very, very lame. Gaga. Right there, just two seconds. Gaga! Gaga! Alright. You ready? It's your girl, right? Everybody's girl. Okay. So Gary Hamilton here at the Grammys with Pierce Freelon. Nina Freelon. Guys. <laughs> mom, mom Dukes over here. Yeah, I was about to say y'all look alike. <laughs> well, that's, that's because of the genetics. Huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah so thank you. So first off, what's it like creating magic with your mother? Wow, uh, it's really special, I gotta say. And uh, you know, I've been coming to events like these since I was a little kid, doing homework at music venues. You know, coming to see mom at award shows and things like that. But to be here as a fellow musician feels really special. Um, she really laid a, a, a legacy for me to follow. We're both nominated in different categories in the same year, representing black love every single day. This thing is beautiful. Yes. But, you know, look, my mom is so proud of me for what I do. But talk about how proud you are of him. And, and just, I'm sure at a young age you had him doing things, but you can never really predict. I'm a father myself. You can never really predict what happens with your kids. It's so true. But I'll tell you what, you can tell them things, you can preach to them, they don't listen. But they do watch you. They watch what you do. And that's really what they follow. Tonight, I feel seen. I'm a grieving woman. I lost my husband in 2019. He lost his father. Both of us put our grief into these music projects. And that is the reason we are here. It, you can't make this up. You can't even suggest it as a way to get here. Yeah. But that's the way grief works. And we are here celebrating. This is a good day. Yeah. This is a good day on a tough journey. So good day. And I know that obviously nobody could take the place of your husband or your father. But the next best thing on the carpet will be your son. Can you just talk about, and both of you, just talk about this moment of, of being together after having such a hard time? Yeah, well, you know, yesterday we were at an event and uh, it was getting late. Mom wanted to go and, and she, I don't know if you remember this, she grabbed my arm. And in that moment, I really felt my dad's presence because he knew that she needed, you know, a strong arm for her to lean on. Um, in this moment of celebration, you know, you remember, like, who's missing when it's time to celebrate something. And you look to the side and uh, the person you were there for 40 years with isn't there anymore. So... Uh, stepping into my dad's shoes has been a real privilege. Thank you. Sorry, we had to. No, hey, I Thank you. Thank you so much. Many blessings. Turn, you know, I'm gonna have to do a stand up, so don't you know, turn all the way up. And you know what? Something happened. Uh,